Okay. Here we go. Back at it again. Uh, what is it called again? FNH. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, I already forgot the title. That's uh, that's our badge because yeah, we have FNH. not been consistent with this. Not at after all. its not conception. Even, not but even close. Not even remotely close. Well, life's busy, and uh, people need to understand that. I'm yeah, I guess so. Or kidding. we were just lazy and we never did it. That's true which too. Is more likely, what happened? All right, George. Right. Okay. Right. Oh. Yeah. We'll it's introduce George. this guy. Big guy over here, George. He's been on for this thing. MF Two Wheel. <laughs> no, I'm gonna leave, but I'll take it. I'll accept it. Yeah. You know what it means. What is your name? Savage. Mother. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Mother. What is your friend. name again? Is it George? It's Joseph. George George. George George Two Wheel. No, it's George. Oh, your mom's last name is George. That's what it should. George 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 Two Wheel. George George Two Wheel. Yeah. Anyway. But anyways, this is our buddy George. He is um, almost. How many months are you out from graduating? Two. Two months out from graduating the Human Kinetics program at the University of Windsor, packed full of knowledge from uh, mm -hmm. PowerPoints and and several assignments. So many tests. PowerPoints, so many assignments. Exactly. You so go. little time. Absorbed like a sponge. <laughs> so we hope to relay some information back onto you folks who are listening, all 20 viewers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just shooting it down right now. Yeah, yeah, gotta start right. somewhere, no, man. You gotta exactly. start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. Gotta Don't even worry about it. And no, you guys no. are our biggest fans. So thank you for that. Okay, but what we're gonna talk about today and get right back into it. I think the previous one we talked about was sleep. Yeah. And yeah, it was. Uh, we should touch on that just a little bit. Okay. And sure. I forget totally what we implemented. Um, in, but maybe eight hours of one sleep. One of them was eight hours of sleep. The other one was Epsom salt baths before sleep. Before bed okay I did that a couple times mm. but I was I've been doing it more lately for just like sore muscles after a workout yeah that's that's, great. that's more what I've been using it for but I did do it a couple times and see the thing with me is I don't like showering or cleaning myself before I go to bed because it's I sweat at night so it's like there's no point for me we've gotcha. talked about this but um I do like it for like uh healing my muscles after a workout or but something you do, like that do it before bed. yeah 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 because yeah. while well, I work out at the end of the day, I wouldn't really... So it's like you're getting the benefits even without even yes. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, that's true, right? That's cool. Um, and then in the way of eight hours, that did not go did well. Did you notice a difference, though, when you took the bath and, like, how you kind of, like, deregulated before you went to bed and, like, kind of just chilled out? It's relaxing, yes. <clears throat> um, like, I'll get out of a bath sometimes and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll take a really hot bath and it'll get me really sweaty and I'll mm -hmm. just be absolutely dead after the bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? So weird. I see you up there, buddy. You just sitting in a bath, uh, okay. sweating. Sorry, but yeah, yeah no, I sweat for um, and come out, and I'm actually absolutely like exhausted. And then right after that, I'll just go right into bed, and I'll um, okay. Most of the time, pass out. Yeah, I, I see don't what know. You mean. Could be a synergistic effect of the magnesium, but also sweating at the same time. I don't know. Hmm. I haven't even. Oh, we never checked the sound on this. We didn't. I'm watching it. I'm, I'm kind of watching it, though. I, I'm a little high. Yeah, you're a little low. Time. Can you just turn yours up a little bit? You're, you're the far one. I'm pretty sure you're the far one. This one? Yep. Pretty sure that's you. Turn me down? No, no, no. no, no. Go for the dial at the bottom there. What? There you go. Yep. Keep this going. One? Nope. The slider. Oh, this one. There you go. Up a little bit. Okay, cool. Test her out. Yeah, it's fine. Live test. Well, uh, anyway. We'll be I good. Got Getting questions. back. We'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the other thing, oh, what was I going to talk about? Was the eight hours? Yes. You know what was weird actually that it happened to me today was um, I forget what time I went to bed last night. I probably went to bed between eleven and midnight, and um, I woke up at six because I wanted to get up early, and I don't know why, but I woke up and I was just like, I, I was like, I am so awake right now. Like, I am so awake, and it doesn't even make sense to me. Like, I've never woken up this awake before. And I don't know what I did before I went to <laughs> sleep weird. or whatever, but, like, I... I think you just woke up in a good cycle. It's possible, like, yeah. Isn't that what it is? It's, like, because yeah. people will do that. They'll wake up at a certain time, and then they'll be like, ah, oh, it's the weekend, I could go back to bed and get a couple more hours. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up even more tired than you were before. Exactly. And um, I don't know what the causation of that. George, do you have any insight on that? I don't, I don't know, but I kind of agree with Chris, like, I mean, I've had similar experiences where, like, mm -hmm. I have, like, very little sleep. Or, like, I'll have, like, a, like you know, maybe 11 or 12. Like, like, power like, like yeah, like, between, yeah. like, four to six hours instead of the eight hours you're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. And I'll just be way more awake than the eight hours I get. Like, yeah. sometimes you're, like, you become too rested. 
like you said, like all the weekends where you sleep in and you're like, oh, yeah, you have like ten hours, twelve hours. Yeah, of sleep. It, like yeah. It's, honestly, it's you're like you just get too long. You're like you're tired for like a lot longer. But the benefit of that is you stay up. You can stay up later without being as tired. Like if I wake up at, you know, if I go to bed at like one and I wake right. up at six, which I have to do with once in a while, mm-hmm. I'll be like I'll be like really tired when I first wake up. But then like after maybe like thirty minutes to an hour, I'll be like wide awake wide and right I'll be here. able to stay up to like, you know, like at least six seven hours, like no problem, mm-hmm. like wide awake, focused on everything. But as soon as it becomes like one o'clock, like midday, I'm just like so tired, like dead, right? Versus if I had a full day of sleep, I could last. Yeah, exactly. So. You'll have that well, uh, second wind somehow. Yeah, yeah. See, this and is that'll interesting. Catch up with you because I, I I don't know how like do you guys pull all nighters and that kind of stuff too? I'm sure you have. Not, to. I haven't pulled all nighters, nighters, but you have. I have once or twice. Honestly, okay. I don't I don't pull all nighters. I'll, the latest I'll go to bed usually is around like two thirty three o'clock depending mm-hmm. on what it is and then i'll have to wake up like around seven or eight maybe. Yeah. that's brutal yeah <clears throat> there's a certain feeling to it mm-hmm. that i can't quite describe but i'll plug it on that evening yeah yeah i really would like to look more into because i know we were talking about um we were talking about the one kid it was some 16 year old kid who stayed awake for like 11 days straight that's, that's, that's like the world that's record weird. that's weird and that's like, um I don't know how you do that. it's a good way to go psychotic yeah, and I saw this other thing about uh, crazy. about um, there was a Russian experiment where they were like they had taken people from like the war and POWs. Oh, yeah, you Did seen you seen see it? this? Did you see that picture? Oh my that god, guy? it's so disturbing. I don't even know if it's real or it's, if it's a hoax. I don't know, but I almost believe it because uh, basically what it is, like tearing their skin off. And shit. Yeah, is that they did like a psycho? They basically gave them a drug that forced them to stay awake. And they stayed awake for so long that they literally started. And, and you know what? The other factor is you're locked in a room with a bunch of people. There's enough environmental <clears> stuff <throat> there to make you go a little crazy thinking, I'm trapped here. You know, I don't even think they were with people. I thought they were alone. That's even I know because they ended up tearing each other apart. Uh, then they separated them. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I read a long either time way, it's like, I remember hearing that story. The one I read, last. the one I read sounded like it was adapted. And it's more of like a horrific thing like yeah, a, it sounds like a horror story exactly but and then, like um, what the guy said at the end yeah there was like, some like we are we are the, the the thing that lives in everybody yeah that is is if controlled you, by yeah yeah that was if like you, like get to this uh, state this like, is what this is what becomes of you yeah just, and they basically like, like just tore each other apart like we're eating it was and it was crazy somehow just, they survived though which is weird like they didn't bleed out it was it was strange yeah yes that was part of it and um really creepy if people want to look it up i don't suggest it but um it's kind of interesting I don't know, know how you probably type in like russian sleep experiment and something that's definitely what it is yeah, yeah but so um the russians are crazy it's it's interesting because like i've had um moments where like i've done a couple on nighters and it's like i don't know how to describe it it's this really weird like for me at a certain point in the night i get really sweaty like I'm not sweating, but I can feel myself getting kind of greasy. I mm-hmm. can feel that gross feeling, yeah. and um, you're just super hypersensitive. It, it sucks. It's awful. Like yeah, people sure. who've done it, they know. You know, but you know the expression like depraved, I hate depraved of sleep, deprived, yeah. deprived, deprived. Sleep <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Yeah, deprived of sleep. You're right. Yes. But like that, that kind of like that story that you guys told me about. It just makes me feel like that expression can come from that. Like you'd be like, if you're deprived of sleep, and you become like. Just animalistic or something like that. Like, Feral. That's basically what that. yeah, you know, like. I feel like it's like deprived, like a very serious word, like to use for deprived. Like, even though it's a common expression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like there was times where, like people were just like, if you get to that point, like these people just went like psycho. Like you get cranky, you get angry. Like yeah. when you're deprived, it's like someone's taking sleep away from you. Like and that's yeah. how I feel mm-hmm. like. I feel like that expression could come from that story. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's yeah. just a different. That all I was thinking about was like, man, like deprived sleep. It sounds like something that. Those feel people like, would say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, last week, um, I did two in a row, and that was my own fault because, you know, I procrastinated <laughs> and um, obviously learned from that. But I get where it would happen because there was moments after a while where I was just kind of like, you stop restraining your train of thought. And then you just start thinking of things that are really messed up, and you're like, that's disturbing like what are you talking about I, like i don't want to compare it to like drugs but it's more um it, 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 i don't know it's like you're not trying to restrain yourself from thinking of things that you normally wouldn't where you'd go like so that you become ridiculous. impulsive in your in the way you think in the way like where like hmm. I, and i was coming into this room and i had this thought and i don't remember what it was but i would just remember being like 
That's messed up. I wouldn't have thought of that if I was sleeping more. <laughs> like it's it's it, it's like you start deconstructing things and you start thinking deeper. I I don't know. It's definitely not a healthy thing. Well, here's it's crazy that I think about sometimes. Um, with connecting to sleep and like people who are really like successful and smart people mm -hmm. who like don't get any sleep and just get shit done all the time. Like they always talk about sleep as being like a healthy benefit to the body and the brain and it can like enhance the way you think and enhance your memories and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But how are these like ridiculously smart people like completing all this successful stuff and being super successful while doing it and getting no sleep? Like they're, how are they not like they're not reaping the benefits of sleep mm -hmm. yet they're still being successful in in endeavors or what they, whatever they do yeah and here i am getting eight hours or more a day and not being nearly successful as them yeah like it's just it messes with your emotions it's weird man yeah it, it, i don't know I, I just find that to be strange sometimes it's true though because it messes with your emotions and maybe that's part of it where people <clears throat> like you start thinking more strictly rationally like strictly like you're just in a zone where you're just thinking of things as quantifiable things that you can analyze. Yeah. Like it's very rational thought it's after like a, a while. Like vision. Like you're, yeah, you're just like very little emotion at points. And I could see where you could get to an analytical point where you're not um, focused on like other all things. You think about. Exactly. So you, you're, you're not thinking, thinking about, about anything else. Well, you're probably so focused on your task at that point. Like you're staying up like whatever, however long you're yeah. staying up and you're just like, but still, I like, have to get this done. How yeah. does your brain not like shut down just, at a certain point? It just else, says no. Everything else turns off. It's, 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 just, it's so amazing. The body's resilient. Stuff. It's like adrenaline. It's, I don't know. Human it's, beings are amazing. You gotta remember that. Like it's not. But that's wanna, like you're like, redlining your brain. Yeah, you're redlining your body. Staying up like nights and getting like People maybe two hours of sleep. Let's set up. People are crazy. Man, human beings. I'm telling you, like they're like they're surprised. People surprise themselves. I know. We did the craziest shit to ourselves, and we still managed to. Come out. You find new things about the human body every day. It's just it just always gets better. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we haven't figured literally anything out. Mm -hmm. We still know nothing about us. Well, we know we know, we know some things, but we there's still so many undiscovered things that are still coming out. Like Wim Hof, perfect example. Oh, yeah. came out. We're not going to get into it right now, but <clears throat> we're going to get onto this. Okay, plowing ahead. That was a good conversation <laughs> about sleep and get more of it. Yeah, All right, yeah. people. It is um, yeah, <laughs> it is a valuable asset, wow, and yeah, you can yeah. definitely benefit from it and have uh, advantages also that uh, totally correlate with being recovered, which we're going to be talking about. So the topic we're going to cover today is going to be about overtraining mm -hmm. and um, or being under recovered. So I feel like you can either be one of the two. Um, it's hard to kind of find that middle ground, that that homeostasis where you're in that perfect state of recovery. Right, so overtraining uh, in terms of that, so just really stressing your bot. What? Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt oh, you're you. Raising your hand. <laughs> you say that word a lot, and with the I like kind of concept of our whole thing of me asking you questions. What does homeostasis mean? Okay, well, George would probably be a better way, uh, George, a better so definition of having. So homeostasis is just the state of where your body is at perfect balance, basically, or, or like your body is attempting to always stay in balance. So like think about it this like this way uh Can you, you get hot thing? right like you're getting like your, your body starts like you start working out you start to get right. your job right your body's gonna try to find ways to cool you down like sweat. in order to maintain homeostasis which is like balanced so it's like an equilibrium yeah literally yeah it, but like your in body in relation to the body okay it's, but it's different though okay equilibrium means like like everything is completely in balance which means and if we enter equilibrium we die Ooh, okay, like, go so, on. Because like, your body will never be yeah, in complete Your body's balance. never in. It never, never, yeah. it never okay, that makes sense, yeah. Your body will, like, constantly try to fight, like, different parts of it. Like, or not, like, or, like try to counteract certain things that happen to it. Like, it'll always try to be balanced, but it never will be balanced. Yeah, it, okay. it'll always stay, like, like just, just out of balance, but close to the line. I don't even think I understand. Homeostasis is the yeah. line where it wants to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Think, if you no, like, like, like equilibrium, you can. Right, but I just mean, I don't think I could understand what you would define as the body being in like perfect balance no oh. in like an equilibrium state. oh okay like uh for example and then dying um because of it oh well, i'm trying to think of i learned about like, like examples are like for like cells uh, uh -huh. they do like if a cell enters equilibrium like through chemical reactions like through um I'm trying to think, like, they break down of energy i don't know okay, for, like, okay. For, for, sure for, say, like it just keeps like breaking down the energy and they like at the same time and, like it always is like making enough and just like it's just like the perfect state sure yeah it'll just 
die. I'm not, I, I can't. I we learned about it before. I okay. learned it in school. I don't remember the exact reason, but like you just can't be. Well, it probably just gets okay. No, yeah, or something, no, it right? makes sense. Not to even over Like there's literally. Well, if it's being too efficient, like it's literally impossible. No, like there's there's a difference between efficiency. Like you can't. Like if you enter equilibrium, you're dead. Even when, when huh. people, so when somebody dies, they're in equilibrium. Like nothing's on. And nothing's like there's no energy being used. I guess no that makes sense. Away. Yeah, you're just done. Okay, because you know I mean? it would mean that there'd be no energy coming in or out. It'd be nothing. Uh, yeah, being right. exactly. Like there's nothing moving. Okay, that makes sense to me then. Because <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to understand how there's that. Nothing, you, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, okay. moving during equilibrium. That's a good way. That I, I didn't think about it until that point. Right. Yeah, it's if there's no energy coming in and no energy coming out, it means you're dead. So homeostasis is like you're stable. Yes, homeostasis is like trying to maintain stability in your body. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah, during a living state. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry for that little tangent. No, no, that's, no, no that's good. That's, that's, the that's, audience people, people said that word so many times. I love words, so I'm oh, like, okay, that's perfect. sick. Well, that's, okay, that's definitely good because, I love words. yeah, I guarantee people have no idea what that is. Anyways, mm. uh, yeah, so overtraining. <clears throat> so basically that point where you're in the gym and you're training as hard as you can, like literally every day, you know, doing high intensity workouts mm -hmm. and you're feeling like you're hitting plateaus and you're not going anywhere, right? That's that's the type of overtraining and it can actually be deadly to your body. So you can, a lot of athletes train too much and they achieve a state of uh, what's called rhabdomyolysis. And we could touch on that later, but which is basically, it. athletes have gotten into this state and it's totally uh, kind of, how should I put this? Put a speed bump in their uh, progress for about a year. So they're just out of the game for a year and they need to fully recover um, just from overtraining in general. Mm -hmm. So, or you could be in a state of being under recovered. So that's basically not getting enough sleep for your, uh, for your sake. Like with um, training in the gym, you need optimal amount of sleep for muscle recovery. Or uh, if you're not eating the right type of foods, let's say you're going eating fast food, you're not getting the type of. Um, macronutrients or micronutrients that your body needs in order to recover optimally okay. so you may be in a state of under recovery so where i was first introduced to this well, uh, this type of overtraining or under recovery and finding that balance or finding that sweet spot was uh i was reading a book yeah. it was called uh, high intensity training with mike metzner mike metzner is basically a bodybuilder mm -hmm. uh and then i'm pretty sure uh, it was uh, the book was written by John Little, so it's kind of translated through Mike, uh, Mike's words, and he basically goes through these six principles. So we'll kind of cover these, and you guys can touch in uh, yeah, or no, key on no. whatever you want. Good. All right. So it goes through the six principles. One being identity, and what identity basically means is that anatomically and si um, so uh, physiologically, every human is essentially the same, right? So <clears throat> it's basically saying, yeah. Like our cell, like we all have cells, we all have organs, we all have muscles, and they all should act in accordance to basically a basic kind of a guideline or principles. Mm -hmm. All right, because if they didn't, we couldn't uh, do proper diagnosis. Doctor couldn't like do uh, surgeries or anything like that. Right, so that'd be completely obsolete. So any attempt to refute this um, this science, this theoretical science, is saying that humans aren't humans. So basically, having that as a ground point to be this is our identity okay. as humans okay anatomically and physiologically we are the same but it makes sense it's but like species, our yeah. environment is different right we are all in um you put it um it's what i'm looking for uh so so what you're saying though is that like your the identity is kind of like us we're all yeah we're all baseline. born with this meat vehicle right yeah and every meat vehicle should act in a certain way but it we all <laughs> i like the meat vehicle. i know we all do we all do here. yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> we all do certain things like we we go through our environment and that that basically alters us so yeah. whether that be we're born in a place with higher pollution that could maybe give us other people asthma compared to a person who's born in a cleaner place adaptations you think yeah you, okay, yeah right. Back, right yeah okay. so that kind of changes like people will be like oh like you're everyone's kind of different because they're different bodies everybody every body is different yeah but like anatomically no it's the same right so we're just, it's just kind of getting that standpoint right right and uh branching off in there okay. anyways there's a cool quote do you guys have anything to say or no uh, I think I get it. It's like a, it, so it's like a benchmark. It's like the benchmark of saying as, as the basic model of human <clears throat> exists, like right. the human species, this is like us identifying yeah, ourselves. And it's important to understand that. Biologically right? as a human. Because like you could, you could, 
well, you'll see. You okay. can branch a lot of things off from it and yeah. uh, come back to that point and say, this is this reason because we are all the same. Okay. Okay. So there's a cool quote by, um, I don't even know how to say this name, Anne Rand. Anne Rand. A-N- Anne Rand. Oh, yeah. Is that it? You've heard yeah, of Yeah, Atlas Shrugged. A Y N. Pretty sure Anne. she wrote Atlas Shrugged and Cool. Okay. Yeah. She's not a nice. Well, she person, has a she has a cool quote. Uh, I'll read it to you. It says, "Man's mean to establish the truth of his answers is logic, and logic rests on the axiom that existence exists." Okay. Logic is the art of non contradict uh, non contradiction identification. All right. So logic is basically you can't you can't contradict logic because it's logic. Right. Right, it has to be. So no Fact. concept of man forms is valid unless he integrates it without contradiction into the total sum of his thinking. To arrive at a contradiction is to confess an error in one's thinking. To maintain a contradiction is to uh, abdicate or resign one's mind and to evict oneself of the realm of reality. Right, so if you're, okay. if you're believing in something that has a contradiction and is true, you are not technically believing in a reality, right? You're yeah. believing in this this fiction. Wait, fiction? Yeah, fiction. fiction yep. Yeah, that's fine. Right, that's that's not real. So okay. you're kind of doing damage to yourself in that sense because you're not operating on logic. Yeah. Right. So believing in something maybe at the gym that's like bro science, it's not going to get you anywhere, right? But maybe it sounds good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Cool. That was a really confusing quote, but I think I, know. I get it. I, it's better when you like look at it and read it. You yeah, but but you gotta, I, you gotta break it down. It makes yeah. sense. Like, I, I understand you know what I mean? you said it like that. So just operate on logic is what it's, it's trying to get at. Man. So this identity standpoint. Yeah. Right. So that same logic that anatomically we're all we're all the same and physiologically we're all the same. Mm-hmm. So operate okay. on that because that's what we know. That's what we know is fact. Okay. Okay. So the point. Yeah, I basically said it. Oh, here we go. So human physiology has a specific nature, and that is uh, it responds in specific ways to stresses and of exercise. So we all respond in a general same guideline or principles set out basically when stress is implemented on our bodies. So it's all the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, wow, that was probably really loud as I just screamed into this mic. No, yeah, okay. we should have adjusted the sound, but I think it'll no, be okay. No, 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 no I just, dude, I just yelled into it. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. Have anything to say about identity or anything like that? I think I, yeah. I, uh, so, y- 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 okay, no, yeah. Like keep going. Okay. Yeah, keep going. All right, so the second part that they talk about is uh, intensity. So you can train you can train long or you can train hard, but you can't do both at the same time is what it's trying to get at, right? Because, like, there, there's um, almost an inverse relationship between intensity and duration. There is. Yes, that's exactly, that's exact, that is exactly true. That's that is fact. exactly yeah. okay. So you've seen that chart, right? Where like, it's, yeah, no, but that's like that's a that's a biomechanical principle, right? You can only do as you increase the load, you can only do so much frequency, right? Mm-hmm. That's just the way it, it's the way your body works, right? It's a, right. It's identity. <laughs> it's a, right. It's <laughs> logic, logic, right? Okay. So to go against logic would be to go against reality. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back full circle. Look at this. Like, just okay. Yeah, I get it. Your mom's home. people are home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, three ways we can increase intensity. Yeah. So progressively, obviously, have low there. We can increase the weight, right? Obvious. So mm-hmm. just stack more weights on whatever you're doing. Yeah. Progressively, um, decrease the time required to do the work. So maybe decreasing those rests between sets or between exercises. So going mm-hmm. right to one exercise right after the other. Obviously, you're not giving your time, your body the time to recover. Makes it a lot harder. Right. Uh, performing a set till total failure. Right, so absolutely giving it, not just uh, conking out and having a set set rep. Yep. You know what I mean? So you go to that actual failure and let your muscle like legit fail. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's basically <laughs> exactly what I said. Keep going. <laughs> Anyways, uh, then it talks about three levels of uh, skeletal muscular strength slash movements. So you would obviously know these. These is uh, this is the concentric, eccentric, and static. Right, so concentric being your weakest type of movement. So concentric would be let's let's do a bicep curl. Okay. Concentric is when the muscle shortens. Yep. Right, and that <clears throat> uh, concentric. So what is that? Contract. Contract. Right. Okay. Concentric yeah, yeah. Contract. So that's that's how I kind of remember it. Okay. And that's your weakest movement. Right. So that's what that's the first movement you're going to run out of gas on. Uh-huh. Then you have your static, which is basically it's right in between right it's holding it still in a static position yep. okay that's your second strongest 
and then you have eccentric, which is the strongest movement. So it's usually when gravity is acting on something. So it's eccentric, it's elongating. Mm-hmm. So your muscles are becoming longer. I think another word for so, is isometric. I think is it? Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's good to know. That's, that's right. interesting. Isometric. <laughs> that's well, I, I know other ter- I know yeah. other definitions for isometric. So it's just like what. Like an isometric view of something would be a three dimensional view from an angle. That's kind of cool. Hmm. That's Different that's dimensions. isometrics. What we did that in uh, Bernini's class. Homily. Uh, synonym. <laughs> Damn. No, that's synonym. It was another word for the thing. It's a homily. Synonym oh, you, oh, word. okay. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It was the same word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Word has two meanings. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. weird. You don't remember what a homily is? English. No. We're awesome. Language at guys. It. I must Logic. have not been in uh, Jimmy's Logic. class at that time. Must have been squirting Jimmy's water class. guns in the hallway. Squirting water guns in the hallway. Good stuff. Uh, oh, okay, so boy. with these different movements, you're basically <clears throat> saying that... Right, so in terms of intensity, what it says is all levels of strength must be exhausted before full muscle failure is reached. Right, so a lot of people think muscle failure is reached when you just can't perform that concentric movement. So when you press it up and you can't, you can't press it up again is when a lot of people think that's over. That's muscle failure. But... You know how I always say lower it slowly after? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah, Yeah. that's basically you're trying to exhaust. Well, what you should be doing actually is holding it static for as long as you can and then be letting it down slowly. Which would be, what's the So you're just going, so static, right? Yeah, and then. So you do your concentric, you'd be like, I'm fucking done. You can't, yeah, finish. And then then you're like, hold it up, (laughs) hold up there. Because static is your, you like that, eh? (laughs) Static. <laughs> Static is your second strongest, right? So you yeah. hold it up there as long as you can, and then yeah. your natural reaction is to lower it basically as slow as you can, so to totally exhaust that eccentric thing. Eccentric, that's the word I was looking for. I was gonna ask. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's the point of doing that negative at the end there, slow. Exactly. So you're I exhausting, see. that's total muscle failure. That's and you're what a lot of people are lacking. And the yep. eccentric movement would be the strongest like, m- kind of movement that you have. <laughs> Exactly. So basically, you're saying that you could probably do that you're negative strongest. more times than you could do that. 100%. People I do see. just negatives where okay. you can have a spotter lift it up for you. So let's say you like you can't do right. uh, like 100 dumbbells for a chest press yet. I cannot. But maybe you could like you could throw it up and then I can help you get it up. And But you could lower it eccentrically probably. Yeah. I yeah, guarantee you, throw you should. It back you should up, right? And okay. then I'll help you throw it back up and lower it eccentrically. That'll still yeah. gain strength. I never knew that. Yeah. That's it's cool. a different way of training. Uh, Ooh, I learned something. Another way of doing it, uh, <laughs> a way that we looked at it at school is uh, it's actually you use more energy and like you actually use more force walking down the stairs than walking upstairs. Is that, is, that, like, is that why it hurts more on leg day? Yeah. Like, no, really, no, it is. Like, you really? don't think about it like when you're like just walking normally. Like, say you're walking upstairs, like you're contracting like your quads. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're walking upstairs, and your hamstrings, I believe, too. When you're walking down, you're actually eccentrically contracting. So you're actually using more force. That makes sense. It's actually harder going downhill than it is uphill, which is surprising, even though it seems a lot easier. Huh. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. That's kind of weird. That's a weird way to look at it. Everybody was really confused during class. I remember that because like, it was one of the Yeah, because, because you think like, really... oh, bro, I'm going to run up a hill today. Oh, you're a badass. Yeah, but like actually running down. No, bro, I'm gonna run down. It's actually harder. So why is this? It's like on your muscles. It's 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 because you're using like 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 I said, eccentric contractions. Like you're 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 elongating your muscles, right? Like you're uh, you're basically stretching them out. Yeah. So it's it's actually using more force. Like it's just a different type of contraction. I see. Okay. That's cool. I yeah. never even thought about that. Yeah, it's it's That's a neat way to look at it. So, it like is. those people that look silly going backwards up the stairmaster are actually probably doing a oh yeah, heck of a lot more they're doing that for a reason, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. I mean, they go well, sideways, I mean, like the weird skating thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. So there you go. For next time, you go for a run if you want to work your eccentric contractions. Run go down a hill. Downhill. Yeah. Interesting. Why is it? Well, you got to get up there somehow. Be yeah, intense. Be careful. Be careful. We'll, we'll run down. We'll run down Malden Hill. Yeah. There you go. Work out, eh? That'd be fuck. That'd be great. I gotta stop snoring. Uh, <laughs> get this family brother. I know. No, it's not. It's now explicit. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's okay. No, the, big e, you... the big E on it. E. Explicit in the iTunes store. That's exactly what it's gonna be. Ready. E. Plus. That's awesome. Big old ready. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's kind of intensity. Yeah. It's a good thing that we uh we got. Yeah, it's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That. Uh, third third uh principle or is that what they are? Yeah, duration. <laughs> so any exercise carried beyond <clears throat> the least amount required uh, to stimulate an optimal increase is not merely a waste of um yeah of effort. It's actually highly counterproductive, right? 
So that's basically saying the overtraining aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're going past the point of where it's actually benefiting you, it's going to be counterproductive on your muscles. So you you might short circuit your um, the recovery process in terms. So it's almost okay. people say, oh, not people say, but it's actually it's worse than doing less. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, yeah, so like exactly. say, like say you did like a like a very short workout, and you're like ah. No, like that's okay. Yeah, you, you don't know, feel like you time, did that's it. fine. Like you still gain a little bit. Like, but it's obviously not going to be the full benefit you would get from a full workout. Yes. But if you go way over your normal workout and you're just like exhausted, like I'm going to push myself to like to the limit, mm -hmm. whatever, you're actually going to like destroy your muscle cells. Is basically what's going to happen. We're going to talk about it more later, but yeah, that's uh, that's okay. a key point. Yeah, you know, that's for that's when we get into the gas. Yeah. 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 Yes. Real quick yes. question. Yes. That's yes. up. Uh, can you see the levels on your computer? I'm just curious if we're actually getting sound through. Levels of what? Your sound. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're on yeah? there. Buddy. Okay. No, sorry, just checking because I, yeah, it like it's going I didn't want us to go through this whole conversation. That's freaking awesome know, right I'll now. Just crank them up right give now. give Georgie some juice because uh, Georgie's a little low. I'm a little high. I think <gasps> you're a little high too. Georgie's uh, better. Okay, sorry, folks. Uh, Should I talk? Mid podcast. <laughs> I'm changing the audio. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a technical yours. We'll have our technical How's that? slide in there. That's somewhere. fine, eh? Yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be good. Yeah, it's good, dude. Yeah, I'm right. sure it's fine. Like no, you can yeah. always crank the ball. We're just having an awesome conversation. I didn't want us to end it. And be like, I heard, oh, we didn't <laughs> no record sound any of that. No, it's all good. Okay, sorry. Please there. continue. Audio input. Yeah, it's my good. apologies, people. It's not an output. All right. So <laughs> moving on. So kind of duration. Here's a good way how I kind of remember duration. Mm -hmm. So I compare it to the duration spent in the sun. So this is kind of getting into the stress, yeah. right? So I'm sure you've heard this <clears throat> me reference this cool. before. But there's that sweet spot that you can be in the sun. So you can go in the sun. It's going to have positive benefits, right? And then, like, you'll absorb the sun rays, the UV rays, and your body will turn it into vitamin D or whatever. Mm -hmm. Actually have a good benefit on you. Um, take in melanin, mm -hmm. which is good for your skin. And then your body will adapt to it by giving you a tan. And that's not bad for your body, right? But once you – so let's say you were in the sun for about, like, an hour. You get a positive benefit from it. You get a tan. Okay. okay and you get all these positive uh, vitamin D, all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. But you stay out there for another two, three hours. What's going to happen? You're going to start to blister. You're going to start to actually like your skin's actually going to burn. Sunburn. Right. Exactly. So that's mm -hmm. just a certain amount of stress. That's the duration of time you spent in a stress where it, it went from basically it's like it recognized it. said, okay, here's here's the sun. And then after that, it had a positive benefit. So that's a sweet spot. It's that one hour. And then as long as you stay in it for longer, it has a negative effect. So going past that duration point. Okay, cool. Okay. So you can also look at it in the same. Good, good analogy. Yeah, same terms. Yeah, you're talking about Right? So what that's George said, yep. where you actually like pre, like not sorry, pre-exhaust, but fully exhaust yourself, you're going to have that negative effect on your muscles. You got to hit the sweet spot. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Next one, uh, number four. Frequency. So your workout doesn't uh, the workout doesn't produce muscle uh, merely. It's a so it's merely a stimulus that mm -hmm. kickstarts the body's growth mechanism. Um, it is the body that produces growth only if it's left with sufficient rest period. So it's an interesting way I thought to look at it because a lot of people say I'm going to go to the gym and get gains. No, you're not. Your body. That's just something that you do to trick your body into into producing more muscle because it's like oh my god this guy is. He's lifting so much, like, we need to prepare for this next time. So yeah. now it builds muscle on top of that to prepare yep. prepare yourself, right? Okay. So it's almost like you're tricking your body. So, you're, so going to the gym is not is not necessarily the act that gives you muscle. It's what your body does after. Right, right. So giving it optimal rest to repair and build that muscle is important. So beyond the... Uh the chemical process involved uh is it true because i've heard this that the way like the basic uh way that gaining muscle mass works is you work out you stress your muscles you tear them and then proteins or whatever go in repair that tear and then you get bigger because you're adding mass That's to essentially that. What happens, is yeah. that it yeah essentially like what happens is like you're basically like when you work out you're using a certain weight Right. And like and you're pushing yourself to the point where like you're getting tired, like you're putting to a failure. Right. And you're breaking mm -hmm. down your muscle fibers and like you're in your muscles are using energy. They're, you know, they're working hard and like whatever. Your body will eventually become adapted by either increasing, like Eric said, increasing muscle cells, increasing muscle fibers in order to make sure that your body can for the next time lift that weight and prepare yourself to lift that weight. Human beings, bodies, well, like Eric said, like tricking yourself, <clears throat> you're naturally going to adapt to the stresses in your environment. 
that's how the human body works. Like right. example, like the sun example again, right? If you live in somewhere that is sunny, right, and you come from somewhere that it wasn't sunny, at first you're gonna be like, it's gonna be really hard to get a t- like you're gonna be sunburned a few times when you mm-hmm. go in the sun, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it's gonna happen. But if you live there for like ten years, eventually you're just gonna naturally become super tan. Yeah. The sun's not gonna have as great as an effect on you because you live there, right? And okay, gonna, and you know what I mean. It's gonna have less and less effect over you over right. a long period of time, and you can increase your frequency, your duration, and your strength, right? In terms yes. of working out, mm-hmm. that's how your body works, and that's like so, Chris. Like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Like how like you're breaking down your muscles and it repairs. Yeah, that's what the recovery period is so important because if you don't have that recovery period, you don't give yourself time to repair, uh-huh. like and make your adaptations, and you just like end up becoming it's a useless workout session. Basically what happens. Okay, because and then yeah, and then on a chemical basis, like just on what you're eating, because that's something I experienced well, where I was working yeah. out a lot, and then I was like, you know, I'm not eating properly, and that's why I'm not seeing any difference, mm-hmm. and I'm also not seeing any like weight, like I'm not upping my weight because I'm not eating properly to help my muscles repair. Yeah, yeah there's so, so many factors. So you're basically tricking your muscles into. Um, being ready to lift that weight next time is that essentially that, that's what you're saying? Yes. That's essentially, yes. yeah. Okay. In, a, in a nutshell. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, nice. Interesting. Actually, interesting fact. You were talking about um, uh, like people from different climates and how their their skin's different. Like that's essentially why we have white people and Please, why we have why we black have people. Yeah, right? yeah. Exactly. People like, born in Africa. It's yeah. Hot. Exactly. Like, and there's more sun more. there naturally, so their bodies are naturally like black because that stops like the amount of um. Of sun rays being absorbed, is it melanin? Right? Huh? What is it? What's the chemical in melanin? Melanin. melanin? Is that what they say? Right. Yeah. There's actually there's there's okay. studies that show yeah. that that uh, I think black people don't have. It's not that they don't have. They have more melatonin or anything like that. Cause that's what makes your skin darker. They don't have like like they're not genetically born with more. Right. But like like you said, it's just I think it's just like based on like a genetic. Yeah. Like like it's it's an adaptation that happened a long time ago, like almost like evolutionary. And exactly. That's just like it just stayed. <clears throat> so that's why. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like yeah, now, it, like if yeah. they come to a climate like this where there's not as much sun, right, and they're in like a polar region in the winter, yeah. they're actually more at risk of being like low at like vitamin D per se. Mm-hmm. Right. Because of their skin color. So you can right. already be at a, a disadvantage, but that's all environment. Right. And right, that's right. genetics. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Anyways, so um, oh, this was a cool kind of uh, visualization. So, so you perform one set, okay? Um, so this is um, this is kind of what is it called? A metaphor okay. for basically this frequency and what we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. So you do a set, a small hole is made. You perform a second set, a deeper hole is made. A third set, the hole is deeper still, and so forth. The first thing your body must do after the workout is not build a mountain, new muscle growth on top. Mm-hmm but fill the hole you made below, right? Must, so you must recover, you overcome that deficit, and then compensate for the uh, exhausted period, so the exhaustive effects of the workout, okay? So you kind of get that? Okay. So that's what you're doing in your muscle. Like when you tear it, yeah. right, you have to repair that teared fiber first, yeah. and then you can build on it. Right, okay. Right. So, so working out that same muscle fiber right after you've worked it out the day before, is not going to do any benefit. You're just going to dig yourself a deeper hole. There you go. Okay. That's, that's great. That's great. That's, yeah, that's and a good way of putting it. Forward, you say. Cool. It's, it's, it was very good. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's, it's kind of an easier way to look at it of what we just talked about. So, okay, wait. I'm wondering, and this is probably a stupid question, <clears throat> but if you're just digging that hole deeper in a sense, yeah. could you? is there ways to simply fill the hole faster? Well, yeah, that could that could go back to certain types of recovery. So, are you getting eight hours of sleep? Are you eating optimally? Are you uh, implementing supplements into your diet that can allow you to speed that recovery process? Right. So, all those factors have a an effect on basically filling up that hole faster are and thinking, adding okay. that out. Are you thinking something artificially? No, no, or like just like yeah, that too. Okay, yeah, like I I don't think there is. I mean, like people have like. like what do you mean artificially? Like, okay, so like say like you're right, like, you're right like you're testosterone sleep. supplements, stuff yeah, like, like, like that. for example, oh, like testosterone yeah, like, improve it. Like, no doubt. there is definitely things that can make that but, process okay, faster. Okay, so tell me if this is true. <laughs> um, so in a sense, working out more, a muscle more, mm-hmm. um, you're digging yourself a deeper hole. So you have to put more effort into recovering, but just recovering isn't giving you any gain. Because you're just filling that hole, you're not building on it afterwards. Because you've spent all this like energy to fill that hole, a deeper hole. No, but then it's also going to build because it needs to prepare 
for that weight that you <clears throat> like that like we just talked about right right i'm just trying to think in the way of the metaphor yeah, no, he's he's explaining. It, it's just the, it's just the process of it. Like it, it yeah. will fill that hole, but the next process after that is to build a mountain because you need to overcompensate. Right, and then what I'm saying though is, is it? But at the same time, couldn't you like not recover enough, and then maybe you just fill that hole? You don't build yeah. on top. Yeah, hundred percent, you could do so that. So then I so then that's I guess, where you short circuit the recovery process right. by working out too often. So that's the frequency. Right. Right. So you're working out too often. You're not allowing your muscles to recover in time before you do your next workout. So the more you <clears throat> work out, the deeper that hole gets. Yes. The more you have to recover. But if you don't put enough of that recovery in there, then you don't get the gains. Yeah. That's exactly. Right. That's right? I, I think I might be saying that a little weird. No, that's right. No, that's basically that's yeah, that's, in a nutshell. That's right, yeah. Okay. So right. you, okay. Say so you do chest. I'm just thinking in the way the metaphor. You do a really hard chest workout <laughs> and you give yourself like two days instead of a week. Yeah. And you try to work out chest Talk again. Talk more into the mic. Sorry. Uh, say you do a chest workout. That's perfect. And you and you do it like you only give yourself like a day or two of rest compared to like like usually people give yourself a week or like at least three or four days I guess. Yeah. Um, and you're not fully recovered. You're not going to be able to do nearly as much as you would normally when you are recovered and you're already prepared for your next workout. And you're just going to end up just digging the exact same hole you haven't completely filled yet. So there's okay, no yeah. point, right? This is a great metaphor. It's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. It's cool. Please yeah, continue. It's a good metaphor. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna try okay. to give you a building metaphor, like, but I was a gonna, building, like, <laughs> an architecture okay, metaphor. Like, um, so you had like a, so you had like a, le- a leak ceiling, right? Yeah, yeah okay. go for it. And it. Just, it's like, it's like this is like the fourth time it's been leaking. Like okay. somebody's come and fix it, whatever. Or, you know, because they're just doing a quick job. Like, oh, okay, we'll just get the job done. Yeah. Right. It's like okay. Now the next guy comes. He's like, okay, I'm actually gonna strengthen your ceiling so it doesn't break every time it rains. Okay. Right. So like that's like so they're like doing a right. So, job for so like it, the it might time. it might take him longer. Because you're not doing. Yeah, yeah okay, it might take him longer, but like he's gonna do a better job. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, more long term than short term. I was trying to give you one from your. I got the whole own. metaphor very yeah. well. I just that's wanted good. to try to continue yeah. my thought process nope, with that metaphor. Okay. Well, that's how you make a connection. I tried. I tried. I tried to connect worlds. Yeah. I don't think I could think of a better one. I'm the bridge. I'm going with the bridge. You're so sturdy, You're George. I'm so not sturdy at all. Sturdy and hard. <laughs> you knock me over like a flag. <laughs> like a flag. I don't even know people knock over flags now. Flag pulls are happening. pretty sturdy, bro. Knock me over just like a like flag. Like just a flag. flag. Just a flag part. A paper flag. <laughs> Dude, you're out of it. <laughs> you need to recover. I'm a paper uh, flag. You need to recover. All right. All right. So, plow it out. Plow it out. Fifth principle uh, specificity. <clears throat> So, so um, hmm. it doesn't cover much about overtraining or being undercovered. It may, basically talks about the range of motion you bring your body through when you're performing your exercises. So obviously you want to do a full range of motion when performing the exercise. You don't want to do. Uh, I know there is half reps. There's um, what are they called? Twenty uh, ones. Are they twenty ones? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's like is a that what they are? That's a, ter- that's a type of workout where you do like the like the full rep and then you like yeah, and then the half rep. Quarter rep. But you're still hitting full range of motion. Yeah, you're right. right. So you got to recognize the full range of motion as you're performing an exercise. So is that like the seven, seven, seven? Yeah, like twenty-one. Yes, yeah, I like those. Okay, please. Cool, eh? Um, and then also starting exercises from a pre a pre-stretched state. So that's obviously doing like a warm-up before, usually dynamic, uh, to kind of get the muscles prepared and the mind ready to uh, be explosive. Post stretched or okay. pre-stretched? Pre-stretched. It's like. Like a dynamic, a dynamic stretch yeah. will, will allow you to be pre-stretched before working out. I pre-stretched. That's weird. It's just like. <clears throat> Are you post-stretched? Like you're, you're after you stretched? Um. I'm just thinking for guy. Right I, I know. I don't mean. I don't mean. I I I understand what you're saying, but I just that's. I don't just, know. That made me. sense Wait, to me. Starting from <laughs> okay. a pre-stretched state. <laughs> it sounds like you haven't stretched. Hey, I guess it does. It oh, does. You know, I understood what I, you were saying, okay, but you but know what? Yes, you're, yeah, you're you right. know. Okay. No, yeah. you, you caught, the, you vocab- caught the vocabulary okay. sounds okay, wrong. Okay, let's go post stretched. <laughs> no, you know, don't call me pre stretched. It's fine. Just you know what I'm. Listening. You know what I'm talking about. I knew about, what you were saying. After but I didn't stretched. even think about okay, that. I, I, I didn't understand. That's no, you're, you're right. Yeah. Go okay, screw that. I'm just gonna say warm up before you work out. Hey, doing dynamic stretch. How's that? That's fine. Sorry. Perfect. Sorry, I ruined the podcast. So Sorry. another thing, I will, I will call me back up. There you go. I will call you. No, never. Specificity. <laughs> uh, going back to that. So dealing with tempo also. So that goes back to the <clears throat> type of movements you're bringing your body through. Mm-hmm. So how long are you staying in your static state at the bottom? Yeah. How long are you doing that concentric uh, movement for? How long are you doing the eccentric movement for? Um, 
doing it for a certain amount of time will all have different effects. Sound <laughs> like puke. I know. <laughs> that was eggs. <laughs> on how, on egg how much? Yes. On how much muscle you gain, right? <laughs> yeah. Or um, what type of training you're going for. Okay. Um, also, resistance imposed on the muscle. So this kind of goes into an all or nothing type motto. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, once again, it goes back to what, what you're training for. So if you're training for muscle mass gain, like you need to go to that muscle, that full muscle failure in order to gain your muscle. It's, it's, it's an all or nothing. So if you're not going to that, you're not going to get what you're, what you're attaining for or what you're trying to strive for. Right. Okay. So then, but what point train for what basically work out kind of go ahead. You know what I'm about to say? Say Go ahead. No, I wanted you to finish my sentence. So, so like, yeah, you're basically, if, whatever you're training for, make sure you're doing the right thing to train for it. Yeah, exactly. Basically, is what you're saying. So, like, say you're doing Have the right training a sprinter, program. right? You're, gonna want, you're not going to work on, like, your arms. Yeah, you're not going to yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. train, like, a long distance run. You're right? going to train, like, right, sprint. Yeah, right. you're going to use no, more, like, explosive, like, explosive you, control. So, you're going to work on, like, explosive techniques, right? Or, like, muscle, like, your with your quads and your hamstrings. Like, okay, okay. Everything that needs to work towards your optimal. So, the type of muscle movement, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's like sure. Muscle. Okay, yeah. Uh, but then it's I guess more specific. just when you were talking about, well, it is specificity. I know. Um, I know. I was just about yeah. um, contradict myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, when, you're, when you're talking about working to muscle failure, yeah, yeah. So at what point do you draw the line between muscle failure and overworking? We will go over that pretty soon, I think. Are we? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I'm like, it, <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on like how many exercises you're performing. Because you could perform a certain amount of exercises, hit muscle failure, and then be fine after that. But if you're hitting muscle, if you're doing muscle failure uh, exercises, like all your workouts, like every day of the week, or maybe like, let's say you're just working out three days a week mm -hmm. and you're doing muscle failure workouts every time you go to the gym, mm -hmm. you're going to get, you're going to be overtrained, okay. right? So you got to do it in, in certain types of intervals yeah. where you stretch your body a certain time and then you go back to like, um, kind of a, a um like a recovery stage where you're doing okay uh, more volume where you're not actually Less exhausting weight, your yeah. muscles to okay. that full failure okay cool right so you yeah. can hit it, um to answer your question you can hit an overtraining state if you continue doing but you yeah. can still <clears throat> work out uh certain exercises with okay. varying consistency uh to muscle failure yeah it you shouldn't it shouldn't it be it shouldn't have negative effects on you if you're okay. doing it in once it go it goes back to frequency for example a lot of people yeah do, frequency uh, yeah okay a lot of cool. people do like three sets of like 12 12 10 8 is usually like an average set for people to do at the gym for resistance yeah uh like so your 12 set would usually be like a certain amount of weight that you can do for 12 usually people go i'm oh, sorry usually people go lighter and uh they'll do like a pretty like easier 12 set just naturally like just so you can get it out you're kind of warmed up then your 10 set will be a little bit harder. You might have a struggle, like a struggle at the end. And then usually you go for your heaviest weight on your last set. And uh, sometimes it goes till completion. Or like some, uh, sorry, till, like till failure. Like, right? So it's fine to have failure during your workout. But like not every exercise, like every set of everything you do is going to go till failure. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah no, I'm going to overtrain. <clears throat> I agree with you. Yes. Da -da 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 <laughs> I don't know if talking. my microphone is something. working. I think it's fine. You just got to talk into it. That's all. Really cool. Try and adjust it so I'm, it's like in a in a good position. I'm kind of quiet sometimes. Don't be like. I don't know. Don't be a. Don't <laughs> Eric is, is going to make this uh, not family friendly. It doesn't even it's matter. Like, it's already there. Nah, don't be a good. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean. What, am I like this? <laughs> no, not like you. You know, take the, doing take the, the act. Filter off it. It's gonna be a little bit. Yeah, I don't even know why the thing's on it. Well, it's supposed to be. Just don't eat it, George. We used to use pop filters. Do you want to just turn it off? So we can only <laughs> used to use pop filters, ears. like we were professionals. Yeah, and then one of them got destroyed. The other one, I don't even know what happened. To that one. I got questions. There you go. <laughs> okay. How's, how's my sound looking? Yeah, it's good. Just it's Just stop talking over the mic. Like, yeah, you could slouch. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, plowing ahead once again. Yeah, how about that? That's what I was saying. Perfect. Hey, buddy. I didn't know I could do that. Oh, that's wow. super loud easy, now. Easy, easy. I didn't know you could do that. Calm down, George. All right, just don't yell. So this is going I'm into our sixth, yelling again. Our sixth and yell. final yes, let's talk. Uh, principle called adaptation. And this is where <clears throat> George's specialty, well, he's been pretty special the whole podcast, but... <laughs> 
This is where we can really get into the meat and potatoes of it all. I hate you so much. As they say, <laughs> I hate as you they with say every moral it, fiber of my muscles. <laughs> as they say in the gym world, meat and potatoes. Wait, world, actually, world gym. Why, <laughs> <laughs> in actuality, though, why? Oh, what's with you in adaptation? Meat and potatoes. Oh no, he's just saying because uh, I took a course uh, in university called the. Uh, get that thing away. <laughs> You guys did this. To I you. do. Exactly. Don't even worry about Sorry. it. We we. You guys. I'm turns in her down. It, it's you our guys... own fault. Please continue. Okay, tell me what and my you... optimal level is. <laughs> Am I good now? Yeah, yeah that's a perfect. good talking right. right there. So, the reason why Eric's saying I'm a wizard at adaptation, which I'm not, um, <laughs> is because I took a course in university at the University of Windsor with uh, Dr. Kevin Milne uh, in course. kinesiology. It's an endocrinology course. There you go. Okay. And yeah, thanks. I'm just gonna <laughs> explain it, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> right, there you go. Yeah, and <laughs> nobody heard that. I talked to the side. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So we learned a lot of stuff in that course, like a different hormones and uh, a lot of exercise variation. And one of the things we learned about is general adaptation syndrome by uh, Han Sele. Han Sele. Yes, and, so and we, we will touch right? on Han Sele. So and, what yeah. you said, uh, the gas principle, in in short terms. General adaptation <clears throat> syndrome. For those exactly. Who would like to pronounce the full thing instead of saying gas because it sounds stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you come up with gas? Or is that no, I didn't come up with that's, okay. that's what it is. It's short form, but you're just being stupid. <laughs> so, uh, right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Please continue. So, um, adaptation, I think it's the most important because it makes us aware. Uh, of the current state we are in. Oh my God, I'm going to kill you. Um, <laughs> in what steps, we, and then basically what steps we need to take next, right? So if we can recognize the state we're in, if we can recognize the stress we are having on our bodies currently, mm. we can know what steps to take. So it's recognizing those symptoms. Okay. Okay, so once again, George mentioned Dr. Hans Sally. Sally. <laughs> and he. his name like that? Sally. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was. Um, well, was, he was a doctor back in like that 1930s, eh? Uh, his lifespan was 1907 to 1982. Perfect. So. Perfect. 1932. <laughs> For everybody what did I miss it? That. That's when he was born, I think. No, 1907 is when he was born. So oh, that far off. oh so 1930. That was in his prime. Was, That's he, what I meant. I'm pretty sure he was like Australian born, and uh, he studied mostly in Canada, though. Like you know. Austrian born. Oh. Did you just read it? I didn't Chris read it that off, well. This is looking off my PowerPoint that I have <laughs> from uh, Austrian. From Dr. Kevin Milne, just in case you ever watch this podcast, which you won't. Great <laughs> lecture. You won't. Um, Perfect. So, yeah, he has a book what, uh, called The Stress of Life, right, which um, I'm sure is on Amazon and y'all can read. If you're, go buy it if you're feeling ambitious, there, <laughs> might, be a, there well, might be an audio we're, book we're that you can just listen we're to. We're sponsored by uh, Audible. What's it called? Audible.com. Audible.com. Audible. 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 What's the book called? What do you thought? Oh, The Stress of Life. Yeah, Han Sully, uh, before he died, put his will. He's like, uh, can, he you told guys, us, can you guys please? FNH, I know it's going to be please sponsor available. The, <laughs> one day, one I'm day. Like, <laughs> the Stress of Life. <laughs> Sponsored by Audible.com. Okay. Thank you, Audible. Loser. We're, They're we're never going to listen to us. <laughs> like, I don't even know if that's legal for us to say, so no, let's continue. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> it's free advertising. We're giving them shouts for the, out. For yeah. the 20 viewers that we have, audible.com. Well, go. they're not going to want to be sponsored by <laughs> Eric, someone who swears so much Eric here. definitely right wants now. to be quiet right now. Remind me later. Continue, though. Gas. Continuing. Gas, yes. So stress <laughs> and general adaptation, adaptation syndrome, yes. the gas principle, is okay. what George what was is talking it? about. So stress, what you know, one of his quotes, stress is the common denominator of all adaptive reactions in the body. So that is just the kind of yeah, okay. the be all. You know what I mean? It's be always all there. All. It's always in every ratio. To, yeah, okay. Okay. Anyways. So stress has specific characteristics and composition, but no particular cause. All right. So you get that? So like you can't really depict which stress is causing the thing because there's so many stresses that we're encountering every day yeah. so yeah you can kind of say i like the most stress i'm putting on my body currently at the gym is stressing my muscles but there's also stress from a bunch of other factors so mm -hmm. it could be like the air content inside the building maybe there's not enough nitrogen okay or... variable <laughs> <laughs> we had to talk about hyperbaric pressure earlier. exactly um, yeah, we're getting into no, it. like the, the <clears throat> on that too like waking up in the morning is a stress right like moving is a stress every time you move you're stressing your body it's just it that stress is constantly on your body but there's so many different variations of stress that is what makes it so amazing and that's yeah. why the body like the fact that it can remain in homeostasis for a long period of time even though you're stressing yourself out all the time is what makes it just amazing as well mm -hmm. interesting yeah, yeah. Okay. so so there's no particular cause is what it's trying to 
like a, there's no pinpoint you can't say this right there's is too the many stress. variables yes exactly so that's what i was going to try and get at okay so <clears throat> stress producing agents like george was going through you got pain you got the cold and hot weather emotions viral infection right, right. muscular activity uv rays the list goes on and on okay so therefore we we're exposed to um or slash under a combination of these stresses cause is considered unspecific but the way it manifests is very specific right so it's basically going back to those principles to see what type of stress you're in or what stage of stress mm -hmm. so that's the same it takes the same process but once again going back to that there's no particular pinpoint of that stress that cause i see okay <clears throat> so this is the gas principle do you want to do you want to say do we go over like the stages and stuff? yeah go okay, over the right. stages okay, if you want so there's three stages to the gas principle as we'll, we'll keep saying it uh First stage is the alarm stage, right? So your body's in a state of homeostasis currently, okay? Like, you're just kind of like, your body's trying to balance itself out. Uh -huh. It's going through whatever. And all of a sudden, like, uh, stress comes upon it. Like, we don't know what stress it is, specific stress, okay? Yeah. When that stress hits you, is that, is that okay? You're good. Okay, so when that stress hits you, right, your body is naturally going to become uh, unadapted to it, right? It's not going to be, it's going to be like, what is this stress? What am I going to do? You're going to feel the effects of the stress, Right. That's what's going to happen, right? So it's like, say, let's say you're doing, um, we'll try to use a, like a workout, for example. Uh, you're going for a run, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you first start running, you notice like you're kind of like, you're like, you really feel like kind of like tired right away. Yeah. Right? Especially like in the right. first so few that, minutes. That, that like, initial yeah. discomfort. Yeah, initial discomfort, right? Okay. Especially if you, and another example too is like changing intensity, which I'll we'll go over later. There's actually an important point about that. Um, so like when you change in intensity, right? Like right away when you feel that change, you're like, oh, it's like a lot harder. Like I got to like, you know, whatever. But if you keep on that intensity for a certain period of time, you're going to reach the second stage of the stress uh, thing past the alarm stage, which is called the resistance stage. So you mm -hmm. go from alarm where you're not adapted, you start to feel the stress, to if you're in that period for long enough, you'll enter the resistance stage where your body will actually become adapted or uh, adapted to the stress. Yes. So once you hit that like adaption or you start to adapt, right, and you're, you start to adapt in the resistance stage, so you're still kind of like not adapted yet, mm -hmm. eventually you'll like pass to the point of homeostasis where you'll be completely adapted uh, the stress is like feels like really less to you like you kind of barely notice it you're just going through the motions at that point and uh you know and you're working till your energy off until you go but if you stay in that stress for way too long like say you're running for like i don't know like two, an hour like right like maybe you're not used to that yeah and you push your body too far you're gonna enter another phase called the exhaustion phase and even if you become ad ad adapted to that stress as long as if it's over time and it's a prolonged period of time and too much fatigue you're gonna push yourself to going past the point of adaptation and you can cause serious problems. Yes. Those are basically the three stages of the general adaptation syndrome. Okay. And they can be used in pretty much any stress ever okay. made. Right. That's why it's the general adaptation syndrome because it works for like, it's the same principle, like as Eric was saying, like for identity, it's the same for every human being. Like there might be slight variations, but like pretty much everybody comes under like, it, the stress might, like the, the exact like points of where these changes happen may be different, but the the, the line like a way it goes it's safe so always gonna yeah, have so. an alarm phase always gonna have a resistance right. phase always gonna have an exhaustion phase back to identity right yeah yeah even outside of a biological like realm that could be used for yeah this. it's used for yeah. anything like it, it, it's it's a, it's a great way to look at how you should train yourself in like anything not necessarily just just physical work but it's great right. it's it's very important for training to understand that. exactly you're so, alarmed you resist and then you exhaust yeah. right like you know you know that <clears throat> thing when we were doing stairs when we first started doing yes. uh, the stairmaster right that first like 10 minutes is brutal and you're like yeah. oh my god i want to get off stop. this thing yeah. and then once you get past that point it's like okay i can do this i can keep on going yeah like george said that like just going through the exactly. motions right it's just a resistance your body's like oh, okay now i now i get it Mm -hmm. Now this is how you do it, and then it gives your body what it needs. It's okay, and this is what it needs to continue through this type of uh, mm -hmm. stress on your body, which is um, then, which is really cool, right? right? And then so you then, keep going, and then it's just eventually it's like your muscles literally are done. Yeah. So recognizing what stage you're in that's important. So just being yeah. aware. So it's a good point. A, a good uh, quote I like to live by is "What is measured is um, managed." So. Whatever you can measure, in okay. a sense, you can you can really manage it and really see it. So you're aware of it. Yeah. It's like it's like the calorie counting. Calories are absolutely bullshit. They're based off yeah. of pseudoscience, and <clears throat> or sorry, I shouldn't say pseudoscience, but like science back in the day. Yeah. But the act of measuring is what gives you your results. Is what right. gets managed. 
right? So you're measuring the amount of food that you take every day. That alone is decreasing the amount of food you eat because you can only hit a limit. Mm -hmm. That's what's that's the act that's making you decrease weight, and not the actually of um, of of seeing of like the calories scientifically yeah. in the food because it's it's not real science. Okay, cool. Uh, sorry, I hate calories. Oh, yeah, um, well, I just no one likes no one likes calories. No, a, it's stupid. A, a quick tangent. Yes. You know what I hate? I hate counting steps. What in the hell is the point of that? It's just it's another thing, right? It's, it, it doesn't have anything to do with it, but it makes people move because they're like, shit, I didn't get 10,000 steps today. So then they, that actively makes them go outside and walk that extra 1,000 steps. So it's just pushing that little extra I don't think fitness. people literally do that, though. Dude, some people do. My mom was crazy about that shit. Like well, when yeah, she first got her people. Fitbit, she's like, I didn't hit 1,000 steps today. I'm just going to walk. How much is a step doing for your body, though? Enough. It's 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 that's Enough, not really? it though. Actually, that's that's going back to the calorie, man. That's going back. That's what because, I mean, though. Right. It it's not based me. on like real science. It's not based on like this this actual effect, but it's it's doing something that you wouldn't have done previous. It's making you do that. It's making you take that step. I don't know. I just wonder. Like, I don't know. I I hate <laughs> seeing people who use that to substitute or an exercise because they're like, oh well, I did this many steps today. I'm well, like, you you walk all the time right well in that sense but but for those people who don't like get out and do things don't go to the gym and all that stuff that's a good tool because that gets them moving more than they they would have if they're like in that competitive I, yeah nature. i'm just arguing like i know i, I know it, it, it is you. it is an actual I, know, um, I hate to say cal calorie counting works but it does right but i i mean it, it, i feel like it works more on a psychological Plane that Chris I, hates steps. I hate counting steps. I don't get cool. it. It doesn't make That's sense. That's what I learned from I this, feel from you, this bro. podcast today. Do you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I, I wonder know exactly if it's more of a psychological thing. thing. It is. It does. It's 100%. I mean, it has, right, you're trying to reach a goal. <clears throat> you're just giving yourself motivation. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's, like I said, that's making them maybe do an extra 10 minutes of walking compared to sitting on the couch eating potato chips and watching TV. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't have to see Chris. If I had my steps, see, see, see that bag over there. It's empty. If, if I had my steps, I'd be. I wouldn't be eating any chips, potato chips on the couch. Right. What? And, with my steps, what I'm are eating you them. doing? Now, now you're just trying to fight me on this. Go George. to Best Buy and get yourself a fitness tracker. Go to Best Buy. Spend get yourself a, bag a couple of chips, hundred dollars and, and feel couch, better about and yourself. And Actually, give they it have to a one in a special company. K box that you can get for free, which is probably dare. Special K is bad for you. Dude, I had one of those when I was a kid. I remember we used to go on the walks and I my pants and it would it. every walk that i yeah, sugar everything yeah walks. it's so like bad. every every step i took it was like a little clip-on thing i did yeah. in like grade school and you'd walk and it would count them and, and if you actually like, tried to pay it ah. yeah <laughs> i was like <laughs> stop me like and i don't get that in fitbit so I, I i would love to know the science behind that how does it calculate how many steps i take as opposed to it's how many bullshit. times you I can do that swing my you arm. can do that and it'll count <clears throat> They just don't expect adults to do this. It's it's not like, dude, it's not that good of a science. You know what I mean? Like, how are they gonna? How do they? How does a Fitbit a know you're walking and when you're not? When you're just swinging your arms? They have those in shoes, though. Those are cool. Yeah, the Nike Plus or some stuff yeah, like that. Or that I'd, yeah, that I yeah, I'd buy into more than a freaking. But, but I mean, but it's just sorry. I just I talked. It's to an, it's about a new technology. Week. It it's it's gonna have its bumps, and then again, we're just getting picky at this point. But at the end of the day, I think it's doing more good than it's doing bad. Do you not agree? Yes. <laughs> yes, I agree. How do you not I, agree? No, I want to fully think about it. Your opinion wrong, What do Chris. you mean? Do you <laughs> want to think about it? Yeah. What bad is it doing? It's giving I'm, people I'm just trying to think about it fully. Calm down. Like, I, I don't know. In the way of bad, I just think it's misleading people and um, – I think it's missing. To do what? The only reason I don't to like walk. it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Obviously not, okay? I just, I don't Sorry. like that it's misleading for what I believe would misleading be an ulterior for murder. motive. Well, that's like saying the internet misleads motive. people, no, no, but no, the no, internet's no, awesome. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying. Come I do understand what you're saying. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going outside of that and saying, hey, come buy a freaking Fitbit for how many hundred dollars because these are the coolest things you just spent this much money to do something that you know the man's always put us down really didn't need to do okay i, I do understand i you. but i, I recognize you, that it's but, important for people but what is that spending the money doing to the actual person 
Like it's it's, it's not like people the, are addicted to buying Fitbits. I'm it's giving go the man like the power. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, bro. You want to fight with the man or oh what? God. The man. government like funneling money. Black into helicopters. Bribe- <laughs> Alex Jones, <laughs> you're funneling money into corporate businesses that are running the country. No, but I, I don't know. It just upsets me because I, I feel like it's giving people a misunderstanding of what they're actually doing. And it yeah, bothers me because people don't – this is – okay, this is what, what I'll say. I'll say that it gives people an excuse yes. to just be like, I'm doing good and not actually try to learn about what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. That's what upsets me. But it's it's changing the general consensus of how people think about fitness and nutrition. It's actually making them do something. Compared yeah, to I agree with when you. that wasn't when that technology wasn't there, people weren't even thinking about it. Now people are actually taking an active step. What, I hate to get what, all like no 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 I agree honey, with you but. You know what I mean? Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. No, but <laughs> and and on the same on the same like topic there like. Gyms weren't a thing, right? Like now it's huge. Now I feel like that's ago. that's why it's just it's it's. But people it's were what in people good shape want. back then too, because they just actually worked labor jobs and worked nah, hard. People were in good shape back then. I mean, a long time. We're ago. gonna progressively get shittier and out of shape just because of how much uh, luxury we have, and is what I'm <clears> saying. <throat> yes. Yeah, like we were resilient when we were apes, but we're never gonna be apes again. So. We need I, to forget the past, learn from the past. Do you, do you understand and what I'm sa- trying to say? I know what you're though? saying. That's all. I agree with you that it's a it's a good but thing I'm psychologically. Saying, I, I, for yeah, I just do. think it's doing more good than it's doing bad. Yes, I will agree with you on that. I just it, uh, I agree with you that there's disinformation in it, and that people are being ignorant of the fact of it and not taking an active step to learn about it. But I think that's coming. I would hope so. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn to you. <laughs> I just I just hope you say yes. <laughs> Okay, good. Yes, George agrees. We're, yes. we're, we're shutting her down there. Yes. Anyways, plowing ahead. <laughs> I've said that <laughs> four times. Thing. Great segue. That's, that's becoming a thing. I want that to be our, our like, segue. Plowing of the day. ahead. Plowing. We need like a soundboard. Plowing. Just boom. Plowing just click ahead. It, plowing Some ahead. guy shoveling on the back. Just oh, whenever we cool. get off on a tangent. <laughs> plowing ahead. That would be good, eh? Just get Sean in here. Oh, yeah. Get him to wire something up. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Instead okay. of that button. <laughs> <laughs> I went ahead. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? So in terms of let's get into a practical application. When you're working out, <clears throat> recognizing, recognizing these stages of stress. Okay. So the first one, George said, alarm stage. So what are you yes. going to recognize when you're working out? What is that alarm stage? That alarm stage would be maybe uh, muscle soreness. Okay. So that initial fatigue that you feel. So a general irritability, obviously. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, and then you're also an increased vulnerability to back, knee, ankle, and foot injuries. So when you're in that state of stress, you're going to be more vulnerable to injuries, which is it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then comes a stage of resistance. So in, in that, obviously, you will feel like you have uh, an increased sense of or not, sorry, feeling like you have more energy, so an increased amount of energy. Uh, your adrenal system will kick into high gear to try and cope with this extra demand. Therefore, you have an increased ability to deal with the stress. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so basically, your adrenal gland, uh, so that adrenal system that I was talking about, your adrenal glands have become greatly enlarged. So this is um, basically your adrenal glands. They sit on the kidneys. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's right. right. <clears throat> okay. And mm-hmm. what they do is uh, there's a large amount of adrenal hormones that are produced to meet this demand. So the hormones include like cortisol, correct? Uh, yes, and two other ones. Uh, epinephrine and I, f- I totally forget the other nor one. Epinephrine. Nor epinephrine. So, uh, can you kind of distinguish? Okay, so here we go. You're right about most of it, pretty much, and you're you're completely right. But the the thing is that happens. That, okay, in the alarm stage, right? Give mm-hmm. example. This is like specifically uh, the actual like if you're uh, using the general adaptation theory for working out, it's called period as a periodization. Periodization. Yeah. Yes, you got it. And um, you're basically uh like you hit that recovery stage, right? Or like your, what is it? Cycle. Sorry. Hold on. I was going to this for a second. Resistance stage. Uh, no, I, um, I'm looking at training volume and intensity. Okay. So as you increase your training volume and intensity, you're going to need longer recovery stages. Like, or you're going to need like, yeah, you're going to need more recovery stages to get back to an optimal right, uh, time to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you keep increasing your intensity, keep increasing whatever. Right. And eventually you're going to like reach a plateau point. 
mm-hmm. and you have to and you're gonna have to recover even longer right but then you're gonna reach a whole nother version of that periodization again right so like if, if i show you this this thing you guys will see that yeah okay. okay so like basically what happens is that the first cycle mm-hmm. okay is like a certain amount of working out right Right. And like every time he's increasing his like he's training, increasing his volume, increasing. Sounds his like he's a doing bit. a set. Yeah, and then like, <clears throat> and then the rest in between, another set. Yeah, rest in between. Rest yeah, there. pretty much, right? And then like, and then the cycle two, right? He's gonna have a longer recovery phase, mm-hmm. so that he's able to do more intensity and more thing for next time, and it keeps building on itself, and that's called periodization, right? You keep like using that stress mm-hmm. to constantly rebuild your body and like constantly rebuild what you can do through okay. the recovery resistance stage. And the next slide. So it's which, kind of which, an exponential curve. Which, yeah, st- which stage much, right. of um, that's in the resistance stage? It's it's kind of all the stages. It's it's oh, it's, it's alarm stage and everything else. This is the. But this that's is, like doing it the right like. That's like, doing that's it for doing training. It, yeah, doing it the right way though, with optimal recovery. Exactly, with optimal okay, recovery. That, that'll be the recovery. end result. Yeah, periodization okay. is like when you do optimal everything and you're gotcha. constantly increasing your stuff. This is what you're looking at in the terms like this is basically. Yes. I'm, I'm pointing yeah, to a graph to Eric. I don't know if you, you can't yeah, see all my hell no, you can't see that. But um, <laughs> okay. just look up okay. general adaptation, um, basically it, graph, I got and it'll this, come up on. I got this Google. from my notes from class. <clears throat> my teacher explained I've it seen that graph extremely before. well, Doctor Doctor Kevin Millen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't mentioned his name. Well, it's, it's his. Shut up, Doctor Kevin. No, I don't, I, you know, it, it, it's his work. Um, yeah. So basically, what happens is that okay, the alarm stage, right? When mm-hmm. you hit the alarm stage, your body is basically preparing, like it's comes hyperactive is what the word is okay. or hyper reactive because like you're that stress right your body's immediately like oh my god what is the stress like what am i going to do i have to figure out what this is mm-hmm. so um as soon as you feel any stress you're going to release cortisol i was trying to use like i was trying right. to go back to any the, yeah any time okay yeah good. and like because you know like, your like when you wake up and yeah. you see sunlight like you're going to release you're going to release, release a little bit of like all all three hormones i think i think cortisol is the first one that gets released or it might be the last one no yeah <laughs> <laughs> Eric's messing with the mic a little bit. He kind of oh, yeah, messed up there. Um, so cortisol is released right away, right? Like no matter what. I think I, I want to say is that. I think it's in here too. If oh, it's not, yeah, it is. It, it's the stress hormone. Right? Yeah, I don't know, but there's those three are all stress hormones, right? When your body goes through any type of stress, you're gonna increase your SNS system, which is called your sympathetic nervous system. <clears throat> okay. Okay. You ever heard of sympathetic nervous system I have. before? I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your sympathetic dominant. Yeah, you basically Which like means you know, your stress side of your nervous system is dominant over your calm side. Exactly. So like your parasympathetic is your calm side when you're digesting and relaxing and, and everything. That's when uh, um, all those hormones are active. Recover like, state. Yeah, recover state is basically parasympathetic. But your uh, sy- sympathetic nervous system is called fight or flight response. So mm-hmm. like it's like when you're in a sense of danger, or, like stress or anything like that, like it's gonna automatically trigger hormones to be reacted or like released, mm-hmm. and then those hormones are gonna allow your body to like. Uh, produce the functions that it needs to fight that stress. So, for example, if you're doing like a run, we get to use the run example again. Yeah. Okay, you start running, right? Immediately, you're going to release norepinephrine, uh, epinephrine, and cortisol, like right in the alarm stage, right away. And you're just going to be like, okay, like we got to use these hormones, do whatever uh, to get get our body like fighting that stress, right? It's going to be like, even though you're not going to be adapted, right? They're going to release them immediately in order to try to adapt it as fast as possible. Kind of like the alarm a super stage. compensation. That's what's going to happen eventually during the yeah. uh, the resistance stage. <clears throat> so the alarm stage, right? You're hyper reactive, like you you immediately see the stress. Your body's immediately trying to counter it, and as soon as you get to the point where like your hormones are all at the appropriate level, mm-hmm. your body will start to counter it. So it will start to adapt, right? And like you don't have to release as much hormones. You're, like you're going to be like your systems are all in check, and uh, you're going to start to go to that resistance. Like you're going to go back to homeostasis, so like back to normal. Okay. Right. So once you hit homeostasis. Okay, and like you're kind of you're starting to enter the resistance phase. Okay, you're going to enter a state of super compensation, which Aaron was looking at from the graph, and same with Chris. I don't know if you saw it, the green mm-hmm. phase. That's like your body is adapting to the stress so well that it's improving. Okay. So like you're basically you know like the recovery aspect, like where it's like oh like hey, you're getting you just you're getting, feel more energy. Yeah, you're getting more used to your that workout like over yeah. time, over doing it, and you're just going to be better at it, right? You're super compensating. Like your body's going to be like okay, I can do this for next time. So like say you do. I don't know, you're like, you go for a run, you do like 30 minutes, okay? Mm. And mm-hmm. like you hit that super compensation point, whatever. Next time you do that 30-minute run, like after you recover and everything, it's going to be a little easier for you. Yeah. Like it should be, at least theoretically. So that goes back to periodiza- uh, periodization. Periodization, right? Okay. Now, the part that we're talking about the overtraining <clears throat> part is that if you're in that resistance state phase for too long, right, and you just keep pushing that phase and you never give yourself a break, mm-hmm. your muscles are just going to like collapse, basically run out of energy. Yes. And that's going to reach your exhaustion phase where like you're going to start breaking down your muscles. You're going to have they're going to have to use different energy sources. 
and they're going to uh, completely just degenerate, mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems for you. Basically, it's what happens. Okay. Right, and there's also and the other thing too is like, uh, there's two other like little lines here that you can. Right, inadequate recovery, exhaustion stage. Yeah, so you can like if you reach the exhaustion stage right away, which can happen. Yeah. I'm not sure the exact stress that could cause that, but sometimes it can happen. It's if you nuts. if you never just reach the alarm, alarm stage, stage right to exhaustion. Yeah, you completely like just destroy yourself. Like it's just horrible. Like something like, I think it's, I think it's if you use such a hard stress that you can never even adapt to it. It's basically what happens. Jesus, eh? Right, because that can happen. Wow. Sometimes you like you just push yourself way too hard right away. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. it's it's hard to determine for like a training it situation. Is. It has but, to be crazy. Yeah, and then the other one is like if you. It's probably like a gunshot. If you don't give your time to, if you don't give yourself time to reach the resistance stage and get that super compensation, and you only hit the alarm stage, you're also going to cause problems for yourself too. So that's why it's really important <clears throat> to do the optimal amount of time for a workout, hmm. like or like any type of stress in general. Right, you have to like unless you become adapted to that stress, it's just going to constantly be a stress to you as as it was before. So yeah. like full circle of me and my bench pressing 100 pound dumbbells if i just picked those up and tried to bench them immediately that'd be like me going into alarm. alarm and then whoosh, right, right into to exhaustion, exhaustion. Right literally yeah that, that would be okay. an example because you you can't reach that it's resistance age you could try to do that all you wanted like but all you would end up yeah, your if body you would by never yourself, adapt to that stress. yeah you would never be right. able to lift it in the first place so you would never really example. get it up yeah you know what i mean over time but if you were like say you progressively went through like you started doing like 60 to 70 to 80 and you went up every week. Yeah. Give yourself like optimal time to rest. Eventually you'll reach that stage. Right. Exactly. Right? And that's basically how training works. Like, okay. Cool. In a sense. <clears throat> exactly. Okay. And that's it's those good. stages. Yeah. So that's like that. this, this graph that I'm showing Eric and Chris right now that you can't see uh, is like basically what we're talking about, like to a T. Maybe we'll throw it up right on there. Facebook or something. Yeah. No. It, it, Go I look at it on can. Google Images. Type in general adaptation. Sorry. Ge- yeah. Den- general adaptation. Involving training. General adaptation and trainings. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Graph, and I guarantee you'll come up with it because I've seen it up there. Just type in gas principle, yeah, and it'll be up there. Yep. So just take a look at that, and you can kind of get in gist of what we're saying. Um, I'll look up. A lot I'll of, look up what hormone comes out first. Right okay. Now. You can go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> what I was gonna say is, um, like I know we're comparing it to like kind of the short term while you're in the gym and saying that, yeah, like when you're when you're initially pumping out. Right. It. Or sorry. Let's go back to the. Um, kind of the stairmaster type thing. Yep. That initial uh stage of alarm and then you go into resistance and then possibly into exhaustion. Now, that happens in short term but it can also happen in a long term right. setting where um so like this resistance stage can actually last for decades. Like it can last for a long time so you can stay in this, feel like you have optimal energy, keep on going back to the gym, but eventually you're going to exhaust yourself mm-hmm. whether it be years down the road. Right. right. So you've hit that initial alarm stage where like you get really sore after the gym and all that stuff, but now you hit this stage where you're totally adapted to your workouts and you don't feel anything after, right? But you feel like you keep you can keep on going and keep on going. But you got to recognize that you're in that stage and have optimal amounts of days to recover. And you've adapted to the workouts. Right. But if you keep on going every day, every day, every day, you could do it for a, for a decent amount of time because your body's resilient. It'll adapt to that. But once again, it's going to hit that exhaustion phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exhaustion phase. Yes. Which could be uh, that rhabdomyolysis, which we were talking about, where your <clears throat> muscle fibers literally break down and right. go into your bloodstream and do damage to your kidneys and liver. Right? Exactly. So, just once again, recognizing symptoms. Okay. I was just to reiterate on the point Go of uh, cortisol versus epinephrine and norepinephrine. Yes. Uh, it's norepinephrine and epinephrine that come out first because they're like your SNS like hormones that happen all the time. And then cortisol is from the HPA axis, which is your hypothalamus. Uh, I think it's hypothalamus posterior or something axis. I forget what HPA HPA stands for specifically, but. Uh, that comes in a little later to place, like during your resistance and like during other phases. It like first it's norepinephrine, norepinephrine, then cortisol. That's okay. How it goes. Cool. What? No, that was. I'm You're raising your hand. Yeah, question. Yeah. I just, uh, I just, I just high five Chris. That's how he nailed it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's it's part of your brain. It's part right. of it has oh, like that horse hormone cool. control. Is that like I its think, main kind of function? Uh, yeah, it's one of the main functions. Oh, yeah, the hypothalamus. hypothalamus. It does. It has. It has a lot of different functions. But okay, cool. Uh, like th- those hormones, though the uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine come yep. from the adrenal cortex, which uh, Eric was talking about on the kidneys. Now it's called the adrenal cortex. Well, the adrenal gla- have... adre- Sorry, the adrenal medulla. But there's a cortex and there's a medulla part of it. Does it have anything to do with adrenaline? Yes, that's why. 
Yeah. Like those are your, those Is are that your, another those, like hormone excretion? Those are your adrenaline hormones, the ones we just talked about. Oh, okay. Adrenaline so when is, people say, that's fight, remember when he said flight or flight mode? Yeah, yeah. Fight or flight mode. So, so when people say like you get, you're getting an adrenaline rush. Adrenaline yeah. is those hormones. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Or is there an adrenaline hormone? I. Th- or is think, it a combination of those? It's a combination of those. I think yeah, I'm pretty. I'm, I think I think there's. I think there is an adrenaline hormone, but like your adrenal gland. Yeah. Is specifically norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is like your adrenal gland is your adrenaline. I see. But so you understand what the name? Like the name gives it away, right? So. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I was curious about because then you were saying it was releasing these other hormones. I'm yeah. Like, it's, okay. That's, that is basically your. Uh, your so uh, adrenaline is kind of like it makes up those or those hormones sorry. make up adrenaline. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Two things I learned today. Forget what the first one was, but <laughs> it's okay. we'll come back to it. I can tell go, you right go, now. Go don't, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Um, Consensory you had to say that. Um, I, could have, I, I, wanted, I, to, I wanted to figure it out myself. <clears throat> but that's okay, fine. so going back to that, um, once again, going back to where the type of stress, it's not specific. Right, so saying that it could last for decades, this type of resistance stage, mm-hmm. like that is once again a collection of all those sources of stress. So whether that be the stress of going to the gym too often, whether that be the stress of eating unhealthy, mm-hmm. right? So nutrition plays a factor. All those can kind of, um, uh, geez, brain fart, um, culminate type deal, okay. right? And basically uh, ac- accelerate your um your period into that exhaustion phase mm-hmm. exhaustion phase yes okay cool so the result of having high cortisol so when you when you have that high cortisol what happens uh you can correct me if i'm wrong on this but mm-hmm. your insulin would increase and then therefore this would reduce fat burning and increase fat storage yes yes okay therefore high intensity sessions uh, tend to lead to an increase in insulin response. This leads to a desire for more carbs. So that's kind of basically when you go to the gym and we do a high intensity workout. Yeah. After the gym, they always say do you want to replenish your carbs because that's what your body used for energy. Carbohydrates right. are your main source of energy. Okay. Because you're not in like a ketogenic diet. You're not. You're not in ketosis. <laughs> where, <you're, laughs> where your body is using fat as a um, as an energy source. Right. It's its main source is yes carbs <laughs> so therefore it's going to have that insulin response and it's going okay. to make you crave that to get your energy back okay right okay going into that uh stage of exhaustion george already touched on it but uh what happens so your adrenal glands simply no longer produce the above average levels of hormones that they have been mm-hmm. right no say it again uh your adrenal glands you know how yes. they have been producing this this cortisol yep. this uh epinephrine norepinephrine yep in excess mm. to deal with the, the high amount of stress. Yep. They know they basically run out of gas. They no longer produce that amount. Yeah. When during the resistance, like when you're, they're that stressed point. out themselves. Yeah, okay. Exactly. That's basically what I'm trying okay. to say. Yep. So, uh, another, um, uh, what's called kind of metaphor I found on the internet for this is you've been, you've been whipping a horse, which is essentially your adrenal glands, but the horse can't keep up with the demand. So regardless of how hard you whip it, so no matter how much like intensity you work faster. out, right, it can't move faster. So it's, it's not going to keep up with that. So your nervous system is stuck <clears throat> in stress mode. So that uh, sympathetic dominant, going back to that, um, which is like which is like the whip, right? So your right. sympathetic do- your sympathetic uh, system is saying let's go, let's go, let's go, but nothing's going to move. Right. Of course. Okay. Okay. Chronic overtraining can lead to serious brain, muscle, and metabolic imbalances. The body has an intrinsic uh, amount of checks and balances to manage. So the adrenal glands, it basically it prepares muscle for activity, right? So we were saying it produce, like it produces the cortisol to get your muscles ready to prepare for that excessive load. Mm-hmm. Um, the roxin is basically it's secreted by the thyroid gland to increase the rate at which cells uh, burn glucose for energy. Growth hormone produced by the pituitary gland, also in the brain plays a role in the elevation of blood glucose. Insulin secreted by the pancreas is uh, concerned with glucose metabolism. So each system is interdependent uh, on one another for one function, sorry, for the prop, for proper function. Mm-hmm. One change in that can cause a chain reaction. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. All right. So you have to have all your checks and balances. Cool. Yeah. Okay. 
kind of like a mouthful with all that stuff. But, yeah, but I get you. But you know what I, I'm getting at, right? Mm-hmm. So you get, once one thing is thrown out of balance, the whole thing is out of whack. Right. And you, and you need to basically recover in order to get that back into that, try and reach that homeostasis again. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. Okay. Okay, yeah. Cool. 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 Um, we well, that's basically all I had in terms of uh, the exhaustion phase. <clears throat> I don't know if you wanted to touch on anything else you had in there. Yeah, I can go over a few things. Um Sure. One thing for sure that I want to go over is just like some of the effects of cortisol. Because I remember you were saying like uh, the lipid stuff. Yes. So, um, yeah, what happens with cortisol, right? It's going to, the <clears throat> elevation of blood glucose concentrations are going to increase. Right? That's what cortisol does. It releases your glucose. I think um, it's, you said insulin increases, right? Insulin, yes. Insulin yes. increases. Insulin, did insulin store glucose? I think insulin store glu- stores glucose. No, 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 that's not mine. I think you're right. It does increase insulin. Well, like have, when I you have an insulin increase, yeah, it, it does store glucose. It stores it either in whatever, the like the liver, the muscles, or as yeah. fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the liver synthesizes glucose from sources other than carbohydrates. So, like, the big thing about um, cortisol is that it increases, like, glucose in your blood. Yeah. Right? And it lets it travel and transverse to, uh, like, your liver and other things like that. And that's involving insulin. So, you're right. Right, and then that's gonna allow you to also like once you exhaust your glucose sources, uh, you can also be able to like break down your fats and stuff like that. And that, that's how you like burn fat. Is basically what that process. Right. So your body ran out of its energy source, which is carbs. Mm-hmm. Now it has nothing else to rely on but fat. So it has to use fat um, in order to get its energy. Right. So it's just moving okay. on to the next thing. But yeah. like I was talking about before with that with that ketogenic diet, it's basically. <laughs> yes, stop smiling. I, I know. Can't, I, can't, I cannot. <laughs> can't keep going. Sorry. It's basically what the the mechanism behind it is is to try and get your body off using carbohydrates, right? And to use fat strictly as an energy source because you can get more units of energy from fat, which you can do through glycolysis and uh, the Krebs cycle. Wait, can you say that again? You can get more units of energy from fat rather than carbohydrates. So you can okay. touch on that you know, exact. Do you know? Do you know what ATP is? Dude, I know nothing. Okay, ATP. so like, there's so basically what happens is like your molecules, <laughs> not molecules, I should say, like um, what is ATP stand for? Uh, ATP is like adenosine triphosphate, which is uh, it's a basically like a did not help. Keep going. <laughs> okay, adenosine triphosphate just it's like a like I said it's like a molecule in your body. Okay, that's just um, energy. Yeah, like that's just what, like, your unit that's, of energy. That's okay. what like your body uses for energy for chemical reactions. Is ATP. So, like, say when you're converting, you need ATP to when run. you're making you oxygen to do for your body, your body's like converting like water and oxygen, or like you know what I mean, or yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Okay. You're or not sorry, I shouldn't say water and oxygen. I should say uh, okay, just make it, oxygen. It's right? basically okay. So yeah, whatever, use you're using oxygen like to make energy. Here, there we go. Yeah, okay, you make you make ATP by using oxygen. Like that's how you like that's one of the ways you make ATP. Okay. Okay. So like. You That's why we use, say to breathe during your exercise. And, like, and uh-huh. you get energy from eating food, right? You know that? Yeah. So basically what happens is like you break down food, like either fat food or regular food, mm-hmm. like like say sugars, right? Like and like that's what the parts of food, glucose and other things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and carbs. And carbs. Uh, and then you break that down into energy. Okay? And there's like a bunch, there's like three different systems that break it down. Okay. There's like, like, glu- like, like sorry, glycolic, like, glycolysis. Say, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle and um, the electron transport chain. And like you learned that in basic biology and like in high school, dude. I didn't take. I don't biology know two of those. <laughs> you don't know the Krebs cycle or the. Okay, well, anyways, they, they don't don't worry about like the whole processes. But basically, what happens is that you get you get more energy from like a triglyceride or a fat, okay, versus you do from a, a carb or glucose, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. glucose, like basically, a carb is like broken into glucose. Going to numbers, of how many? Uh, I think specifically for glucose, it's <clears throat> thirty six to thirty eight, like through the whole cycle, like through all three things. And then there's a, uh, like, fats can change rapidly. Like, like you, if you have a huge triglyceride, you break it down, like you'd be like 500, or something like that. Like, like it can be like a ridiculous like amount. So like, okay, so like 36 like ATP gets you like I don't know, like let's say one rep, like in, I don't know, but you know it's not. So it's like energy. Thing. Yeah, if you burn a fat though, you can like do like 10 reps. Okay. But here's a key thing about it is that you don't use the Krebs cycle or the electron transport chain system unless you're doing aerobic exercise. Where you use oxygen, mm-hmm. which is aerobic and anaerobic. Anaerobic means you don't use oxygen. Aerobic means you use oxygen. So, say you're running. Okay. And like you're doing like you know how we did cardio today, like 30 minutes of cardio. Right. That's using our aerobic system. Okay. okay. So we use all those energy systems. So like we could break down fat and get like a ton of like a ton of energy from our fats. Like say we don't have any carbs in our diet, like the ketone. Is it called ke- ke- ketones? Ketone. Yeah. yeah, ketone diet or whatever. 
right? Oh, Not, ketogenic diet. Keto, ketogenic diet, okay, where you don't have any carbs. If you do aerobic exercise with a ketogenic diet, you'll probably like break down a ton of fat because like yeah. that's where you use your fats. But if you're doing resistance training, I get it. But if you, <laughs> but if you do resistance training, yeah, just like just like lifting weights and stuff, you don't use those systems like okay. very much. You use you still use them all the time, but not as much. Okay. You use like phosphocreatine system. You use just simply anaerobic glycolysis. Okay, and you'll still get like a little bit, like you'll get whatever. But like you, you're still gonna use carbs, and you're gonna use, you're not gonna use as many fats. Okay, two questions. Yeah. One. So the point of like a ketogenic diet would be the fact that you're not taking carbs. So when you do those workouts, instead of burning carbs, you're burning fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second question. Is not a question? That was a statement. <laughs> no, but that's true. No, no, he's just asking. That's oh, what I, was asking. Uh, I forget my second question. Something about no worries, like something dude. about the running stuff. Like the way you see. Oh, you, yeah, okay. oh. Um. So. Jeez, and a, Good call. So what are you going to say? Kind of, kind of. And, and so an aerobic exercise involves breathing. So if I, for example, went underwater and did Pilates, that would be anaerobic because I'm not breathing. Well, I mean, you can't You'd stay, have to you breathe in order to be underwater. underwater forever. No, but I'm just saying for that amount have, that I can hold my breath. No, that would, no, it wouldn't be. Okay, like, for, okay you for enter your, your anaerobic. Your an oh, sorry. Your anaerobic system is from I'm anywhere from no, 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 yeah. anywhere from <laughs> 10 seconds or like whatever like like one second to um to like two minutes okay, okay? after two minutes you basically start to use your aerobic system because yeah. like okay if, if any exercise goes, if that's any, yeah because if so any it's exercise time goes, based yes yeah, yeah okay I forgot I forgot think about it right? like, that. you can do oh, I don't geez, know, say, okay sorry <laughs> if you're doing no no it is time based but like say you're doing like for us say you're, you were doing like really really lightweight curls so that so if you do them like if you were able to do them like thirty minutes, then you'd probably be using your other system. So that's yes. why doing like a bench press for a couple sets isn't an aerobic exercise. Yeah, exactly. Anaerobic. You got it. It's anaerobic, yeah. Because you're not initiating certain systems. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. you're not working out over a certain period of time. You got it. Take you got it. Biology three one hundred and one. Learn today. You'll learn it. Uh, Trust me. It's cool, eh? See, we shouldn't even do the three things I need. Chris, to do that for is the literally week. We just do things Chris <laughs> learned this week. Uh, Phys uh, physiology, uh, like that's all I learned in school. That's all I learned. Like most of what I learned in school, I learned yeah. a lot of. I learned a lot of amazing things from kinesiology. Mm -hmm. But like, it's the number one thing was I love physiology. It's really fascinating. Was, like, uh, I wish I, I wish I could explain it better. Like I was able to explain it. That was very well. It. Yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, it's been it's been a little bit since I've had to explain it. So no, no, but it's good to like rehash it. Oh, I love it. I love, like looking at this endocrine stuff right now. Like I want to go back and read it all because like it's just it's, so, it's so good information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Are we gonna end soon? No, 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 no. I was just no. Go ahead. Okay. What are you so say? the other thing I want to say was like uh, we talked about like the overtraining and all that stuff, and yes. it, it's like and we talked, a big thing we talked about was the principle of like this okay. is like the same for everybody, like the identification right. thing. Um, I have like a, a slide here just says. Important to remember the training of diff uh, for different sports is not exactly the same. Think uh, football skills versus hockey skills, okay? They're totally yes. different sports. There's totally different aspects. Definitely, okay. You know what I mean? Like running, like sprinting versus race versus a baseball player. Completely yeah. different sports, yeah. okay? So nor are the physiological requirements for the sport. So like we said, like, like you know what I mean? Like, like, so like a long distance sprinter versus a short distance sprinter, like, right? The, the, the physiological requirements are not the same whatsoever. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. but Environment's different. the principle of training is always the same. For anybody, okay. Like, okay, and that's what you. And I'm saying this is the, like this is a good point for you guys. So yeah. if, even if you're a trainer, okay, and you're like, oh, you know, I got to do, you know, he's a football player. I got to work him way harder than I would work a hockey player. You know what I mean? Like in like terms of whatever. That's not really true because you're still using the same like principle of like repetitive phases, normal training. You overload the training, right? Then and then you have a recovery, and then you then you then the next time yeah. you're training, it'll be better. Mm -hmm. That's always the same for everybody else. <clears throat> with the type of workout you do, the uh, like amount of intensity, the fatigue, like all the other like variables that go into your training can change. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. But the, but the principle of like how you train somebody should be always be the same. Okay. Right. That's all I want to say. Okay. So it should follow the same guidelines. Yeah. Because and then either you're gonna reach. It's called. Uh, it should always include recovery. Yeah, it the, should always include a loading period and yeah, a rest. Okay. Period. At a very the opposite basic, of overtraining, yeah. by the way. Like well, I don't the opposite, but like the goal you want to reach is called overreaching. It's like when you yes. increase your allosteric load versus overtraining where you're going to uh, increase exhausted stage of adaptation. Go ahead. Allosteric load. Allosteric load just means like the load you're lifting, pretty much. Like like just like okay. the, the average load you would use. It's not unnecessary word? Uh, it's a scientific word, allosteric. It's a cool Al word. Allostatic, it's a very allost cool allostatic. word. <laughs> allostatic, not allosteric. Sorry. Al allostatic? Allostatic. Like, like a constant weight. Very cool. Allostatic. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Is that good? Sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah. That was my one word. Calisthenics. My okay, one uh, question. Yeah.
Yeah. Any, any other that was questions? my question. Yeah. Or, is, what about you? Um, cool. I was just gonna kind of sum it up and say like, ahead, it's like we were getting into you say like you want to re- reread this stuff and it's like it gets you excited. Like we should all be excited from like this type of information because it's it's like a human right to know this information because it all involves us, right? So the, it's just weird that it's it's not kind of stressed and I don't know in school like I never I was never introduced to this kind of stuff and I never got excited for it i don't know the reason why maybe it was uh the type of teachers but i'm not going to say that but it might have been the mind state i was in at the time Mm -hmm. but i know i have this um excitement now so it it must have existed inside of me yeah but it should exist like what i'm trying to say is it should exist in everyone so everyone should be should be knowledgeable of their own body it's a human right to be knowledgeable of your body yeah and that's like just uh things we've talked about before in the way of having an open mind towards things like george loves this stuff just based off like the biology and the chemistry whatever behind it Mm -hmm. you know and it's fascinating to him same with you and your fitness like it's and even this stuff too like it genuinely fascinates you guys where it's like you're excited to learn more about this i have that about other fields but at the same time when i'm listening to this i'm like this is fascinating because well completely relates to me it's yeah my body too that's a thing so it's uh it's very interesting and i think uh i think people need to realize that it's it's something that we all share and uh it's something that we all need to be encouraged to learn more about exactly it's people very should, important people should be educated more uh at a younger age about like just exercise in general like not necessarily yeah. like you have to do exercise right away like yeah. no one's saying yeah i feel to. like it just had different connotations to you it, should just you know? it did like it, it wasn't seen as like uh it's not presented in a way it's like <clears throat> I don't know. It, it just, it was, it, it well, just, school just, altogether is just kind of a weird presentation. It is. Well, yeah. it, it seems like but, an institution rather than uh, than like a like. Yeah, you learn there, but it just seems like like I always that's say why that university is so much better. It's, yeah, I'm telling you because like at least at least it, like by Windsor because like it feels cool. The teachers are able to teach what they want to teach, like the important things that like go in. Like I've mm-hmm. learned so much more application than I've learned, even though it's all, a lot of it is theory. Like I right. know so much more about like the world and like how this information could be used in like research and like and just yeah in, it's just in, you're able in, to make more connections like general adaptation syndrome i can use that anytime i want and it's just a theory but it's like i can understand how that theory works to other things high school doesn't teach you that like just, it's just a manual like that's just like it's given yeah. to you and like and i feel bad for the teachers because they have to teach they have to teach it yeah it's, yeah like, that's the you know what i mean like I, i've been doing like, here's I'm, your curriculum I wanna, you have to hit these points i want to be a teacher <clears throat> and it's hard for me to like think that like i'm just gonna have to like teach these kids like the exact thing they're supposed to learn like you know what i mean like i have to I have to mix this chemistry with this chemistry it's like mm-hmm. if it's not going to be relevant to anybody then what's the point yeah i know what you mean but like that distinguishes a good teacher between a bad teacher the, yeah. the teacher who can take all that stuff and then make it fun and then make it interesting like a mm-hmm. like a neil degrasse tyson character yeah he's awesome he's amazing. right who, who somehow like he he puts it into everybody's perspective that everyone can understand yeah and that everyone gets excited about but then you have another science teacher who's totally like monotone and just puts overheads on all the time and, and makes you copy shit. That's yeah. why it's hard for kids to learn. Sometimes, I mean, you gotta cater to people's uh, yeah, the, or people's the way people learn. It's mm-hmm. gaining an interest, and I think kids don't uh, kids don't recognize how important just learning things is. It's so like it becomes. I think school makes it such a uh, such an automated system where it's just like sit learn it's, leave institutions and, a good word for it, yeah, yeah and it's a hard percentage and um uh the other thing was like you saying neil degrasse tyson um what i think of is i remember in uh chooch's class uh at the towards the end one of the last things we touched on like the last week of school he's like uh you know what uh we're pretty much done with the curriculum so i'm going to show you guys this too because i don't get to touch on it but he was telling us about like um about quantum physics and we were he talked very oh. briefly on it right and he talked about quantum physics and i i totally forget it now and it was co- kind of cool and like quarks That's and that neat. and i was like and then i was like oh this is so cool hey. like i was like this is awesome and he doesn't get to teach us this even though he seems like he's really interested in it oh 100 that's why and and just saying like if neil degrasse that's tyson really had to sit cool. down and give you your curriculum yeah you'd be pretty interested I have but a memory like that dude yeah i'd be so pissed that's, off that's why post that, like, that's why post secondary is it post secondary post secondary yeah. school is so much better yeah like i'm telling you like you just like go to college or university either one like mm-hmm. you just find it so much better mm-hmm. you know what i mean especially if you're in a field you like i know a lot of people go into fields and they're like I don't really like it as much, and they try to switch. But once you find something you really like, it's just it's such a big change. Dude, we're all in lucky. The way you want to learn? Yeah. We're, like uh, the three of us are in things that we really like. Yeah, I was. I'm very fortunate. To be like, yeah, for and, sure. And yeah, that's 100%. awesome. Like, I was surprised. I know you. Like, you kind of. You did. Oh, sorry, Randy. 
What? Are we oh, ending? Are no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just I know, don't. I know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It. No, 100%. But, um, yeah, I'm glad we touched on that. I feel like I missed something there. No, no, you're good, dude. Right, you're 100%. Go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry. You're 100% good. My bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no worries. All right. Okay. But, yeah, summing it up, um, we were supposed to touch on basically um, what you took away from this. What I took away from this. Right. Okay, I might forget because short-term memory for me. Um, I remember it's true just the, quantum physics. <laughs> man. <laughs> right. So so cool. So cool. So like what you took away from this, how you're going to apply it to maybe um, like what you do now. Okay. First thing, uh, you talking about uh, – well, okay, let's – two things, uh, kind of the same. You talking about these different um, – I forget what the title. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, before that, like the things that you've been talking about, the six oh, different the principles. principles, being able to recognize them as I'm doing an exercise yes. and being able to know where I am in that and going yeah. through okay. them. Yeah. Because like you said before, yes. um, yeah, it, it, that's part of it. What, what was the thing you said? What can be measured can be managed? Yes. Yes, that. Good. Secondly, uh, George with the alarm. Wait, don't tell me. I'm not going to tell you. Alarm, resist... Exhaust. Nice. Alarm resist exhaust. This is a. Tr- I'm sorry, but this is a struggle for me. I have a very terrible oh, dude, memory when a lot of it. It. <laughs> when a lot of information is thrown at me. I'm really. Um, oh yeah, dude, we covered a lot. Yeah. Those three things, and then I think that more uh, when I'm working out to recognize when I've hit those phases and then adapt to them. Yeah. Secondly. Um, Thirdly. Thirdly. Well, I kind of included those into oh, like. Okay, I get you. If I had to put those under a subtitle, I'd say things to think about <laughs> when you're working. Right. Out. Okay. Now, exactly. actual physical things. Here we go. Uh, the, your muscle movements. Right. Concentric, Give me more static, and eccentric. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the diff and and more importantly, there, uh, the strength at each one. Mm-hmm. Right. Like your your concentric movements, which people weakest. do a lot of, is the weakest. Yeah. But those east, like that, that that's what really hit me because I was like, well, like every single movement we do practically, even like they're the weakest movement we could be doing. Right. Well, it is includes right? all of them. Yes. Well, yes, throughout every the whole. Every you do includes every single But movement. that main, anyway. Right. That's the main one you think about. Exactly. You think that's the one that's getting the, that's doing, but it's that's having the action. That that's is having the muscle growth. And that's what's interesting. Yes. Um, that. Uh, yeah, that's good. Just, that's just good knowledge. Uh, uh, I guess you could count the uh, weird diet. Ketogenic. Ketogenic. Yeah, I definitely learned about that. And um, how it burns fat in that way. That's interesting. That is Honestly, interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Um, I think that's about Hopefully, it. Hopefully, yeah, in another mm-hmm. podcast. I was planning on going. I was telling George. Yeah. I'm planning on going on it after um, the competition. Yeah. And, uh, in May, so okay. I'll uh, hopefully we'll do a podcast and try and cover that. I'll go through basically what I was feeling like during that that first phase where you're supposed to feel like uh, absolute dog shit. I can imagine. And then um, explicit. Yes, it's explicit. <laughs> and then after, Explitive. and then how I feel after. So hopefully we can cover that. But uh, I feel like we've covered a lot in this podcast, and hopefully Dude, you guys this is great. at home yeah. have learned some. Uh, it's a long podcast. Yeah, this yeah. is probably a decent Sorry. long. Sorry, but got, it covered we, a lot of how, good how long was it? We got really I don't know. I, I haven't stopped. Recording. So it's over but an will. hour. But oh, oh. <laughs> okay. okay. So camera uh, moved. Yeah, it's sorry about that. Ten four. Stop uh, recording. Look at the nice color of. The we'll walls. end it now. We see don't have any ending music, but see you next time. Maybe not. That's a good one. See you next time. See you next-